All right, guys, we're back on. Welcome back to another episode of the Touchline Podcast. You're new here. Hit the like button. Hit subscribe. Comment down below. Now, today, we've got, a spe- we've got some special guests on. We've got Ray and Staff from Have A Chat Productions. Boys, how are we? How are we doing, well, boys? Mate, how are you? Well, good, yeah, good, we're good, doing good. right. We're doing all right, man. Um, in case you guys are living under a rock, these boys run their own podcasts. They run many podcasts that talk about sport and talk about other things. They like to have a chat. So, um, yeah, boys, well, we, we, we also went on their podcast not too long yeah, ago. Yeah, that, that was a good so one. So, if you guys want to check out yeah. that podcast the link in the, is in the description as well as their links all their social links are in the description um boys what have you been up to since the last time we spoke mate what have we been up to bro we're just watching these dogs yeah oh i've man, seen your your, it, other, your recent vlogs last two ones i enjoyed that a lot boys bro. just inspired us yeah that's, that's all that's it also is. True. you guys inspired us that was cringing saying <laughs> no i don't want to do vlogs yeah. but i said bro they said it works and you're not wrong. You're, sma- you're smashing. That that first vlog, was man, actually very loved good. it. First one was good. Second one wasn't a fan of because yeah. old mate over here decided not to come to the States with me. Yeah, yeah. Nah, it was good. <laughs> <it was, laughs> how was, yeah, how was the States? States? Yeah. It was good, bro. Yeah, yeah, I needed that trip, man. It was uh, it was hectic. Went to uh, went to Texas, went to Raw. Which yeah, was awesome. that, that we'll was bad. New later. York and no. Went to New York, went to right. LA, just went all over. Let's talk about that Raw. Yeah. Appearance. Yeah, you had a you had a post up. Had a <laughs> Parramatta yeah, loss yeah. in the twenty twenty two great well, once I saw that, I'm like, there's no way he did that. <laughs> that was the greatest thing I saw all week. <laughs> I texted our, our WWE chat, I said, Boys, what what posters do I come up with? They gave me all these ideas and then I I thought of that one. I texted Stat, I said, Please be watching Raw because I got a surprise for you. Held that thing up with pride. Uh, Ills lost the 2022 grand final. <laughs> Mate, I, I saw it and I just went, the son of a gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so you didn't know about gun. it. No, no, I did. He so did. he asked for like different things like, well, what do we put on? What okay, should I write? Yeah. And one of the things I said, because he loves Cody Rhodes. Who yeah. doesn't love Cody Rhodes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, okay, you could try it. Flew out all the way from Australia to not see Cody Rhodes. <laughs> to find that Cody Rhodes on SmackDown. Yeah, yeah. Just like something smart, just something simple. Yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. the way he was holding, the way you were holding that assignment, you're holding, you're holding it as if your life depended Brother, on it. Brother, that did. was in every single <laughs> shot I saw in Raw. <laughs> did oh, Bronson Reed like point at you or something? Yeah, yeah. Because I saw on the cameras like pointing at you specifically. Yeah, so yeah. he pointed at me. I started yelling back yeah. at him. One of the boys caught it on tape. I'll show you boys later. But I just had so much fun, bro. I think I was born to be in a WWE yeah, crowd. Nah, that yeah, it, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it Raw's awesome. always, but like the, the American trip itself, like what, like I'm, I'm always curious about America. I want to go there one day, but like what's the biggest difference between here and there, like you could say? The biggest difference between us and them is they do everything entertainment wise better. Yeah, right. Bro, yeah. when you're standing in a line to when you're at the shops, yeah. they're yeah. just trying to constantly entertain you and make sure you have the best experience everywhere you go. Yeah, right. That's what it is. It's They just know how to do that. Yeah. But Australia is just quality. Food quality, road quality. Our quality is up there. The States is just... It's different, bro. Yeah, right. It's just wow. big and awesome. It's good. Because when I think of the States, I think of like movies and stuff. I don't think it's like a real place in a way. Mm. It's like we, we, that's... that's that's every time we, exactly. we we watch the United yeah. States, it's either on Raw, a movie, a TV yeah, yeah. show, yeah, or whatnot. Yeah, so true. like, I'm just curious in that way. But anyways, let's get straight into Bef- some league. Quickly, yeah. before we get into league talk, uh, if you haven't watched the skydiving, Anthony, which he done on oh, Saturday. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well, Anthony, hey, Anthony. 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 I love you, man. Man of his word, he done it. He, he, he accomplished that. And yeah, make sure you go watch that vlog. And yeah, let's get into the league talk right now. <laughs> Our first yeah. game from uh, round 14, Dragons versus West Tigers. They won, it was a 54, uh, let me check. It, it was, was 56, 56, 14, yeah. What are your big opinions? Win, big win. Game, boys. Look, it was a decent start from the Tigers. You know, yeah. they, they come off that break that they had of the bye. And I think they were a little bit motivated because they're starting to put things up to motivate him in training. Yeah. They had like Slay the Dragon. He seems to be going all right. They started to save him in the yeah. first half. Get out 14 12 at the break. And I feel like what's happened the last, I think since the Dogs versus the Dragons, and we put on that, ran that rampage yeah, in the second yeah. half. Ever since that game, they haven't been themselves. Like it, with the Dragons, they've waited to the second half of every game to click. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It happened against Penrith. They were down 10 0 to Penrith. It, they came back 22 10. And then this week against the Tigers, or sorry, last week against the Tigers, yeah. Yeah. they were down 14 12. And Flanagan just came in, ripped them a new one, and they yeah. come out chucking another 40 odd points. Yeah. They're, they're a 40 minute team, but the other way around. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. They try to find their footing that whole first half, and then the second half, they just come and attack. Yeah. And Tigers just don't know what they're doing, mate. It's, 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 it's sad to see, man. Like, they were up two, two points at halftime yeah, or four yeah, points. Yeah, 14, 12. 14, 12. Man, how do you lose that lead and then yeah. go on to, you know, the Dragons end up scoring another, another five tries yeah. in that it, second half? As you, as you said, it was, it's the opposite. Just way Dragons around. have a better squad, I guess. And that's why, like, they, again, leading 14 12 and then just lost that confidence. Yeah. But yeah, Zach Lomax, oh, man, a hat trick again. Wow. This guy, man. Do you wow. think he'll backflip on the duel? He has to, man. That's too late. 
It, it is too late. Cause Cl- that, it's done. It's done. Yeah, it's done. So it's but like, surely there's a clause in the contract. <laughs> like, I'm not even a Dragons fan. I'm getting passionate. Bro, yeah, yeah. But 100 percent conversion. Do you reckon yeah. somewhat he Killed regrets it? it? Because it's I too late yes. now. You I reckon he regrets yes. it? The, the reason I want to say yes is because I believe that he signed that deal to play under Brad Arthur. Yeah. yeah. He didn't sign that deal to play <laughs> under so, Barrett yeah, yeah. or to play under Royals or yeah, to play under point. who are these ne- Chico or these guys yeah, that are rumored to come through. He signed to play under the BA, which in all uses, like, hindsight's a wonderful thing, but like, I feel like yeah. the writing on the wall was there for BA for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to go down that road, but. No, no. no it was, but it was. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it was, right, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 11 yeah. years, mate. Yeah, that's it. Get a group on, wrap it up, wrap it up. So for me, for Lomax, I think we don't actually know the real reasons. Yeah. He hasn't really identified the real reasons. It's about, if it's him moving to the wing, brother, stay on the wing and shut your mouth. He yeah, yeah surely it, yeah. it isn't that like. There's got to be more, uh, but yeah. I think you know what it is for me. Uh, my opinion would be that Lomax has been through that many coaches at Dragons, <laughs> been through that many rebuilds, and he feels like, you know, going to Parramatta, there's a bit more- Stability. Stability, yeah. yeah. I he, agree he with that because that, you look at um, Ben Hunt too, he wanted to leave the club too. So you sure. can see maybe the board are, at Dragons are, maybe lying to them like a lot of changes in the yeah. club and maybe it's time for them to move on so yeah that, that's a fair point we well, said about, about the game but 82 percent yeah present our completion rate for the dragons and only 60 for the tigers man wow. just talk about a, a gap levels, mm. yeah. and like uh, this is these are two teams that are that are, that are really in the same boat yeah. yeah like they should be man like they, this should have been really a tight um, sh- tight game it should have been but the problem with tigers is when things don't go their way yeah they buckle mm. oh, so yeah. one yeah. wrong try one wrong mistake and then they're, they're done that's right. You, it's, it's similar thing. to dogs where last year where like one try we just drop our heads yep. and we just yeah. can see back to back to back tries. So that's sim- similar to Tigers right now. But let's move on to the best game of the week. Bulldogs against Parramatta. Wow. Hey, uh, wow. The greatest hey. game I've ever been wow. to, man. That was right. outstanding. That was would have been cracker. 46,000. Oh man. Oh, yeah. Is it, that was the what, the biggest home game I heard. Yeah, yeah. For, yeah. I think it was the second no second biggest dogs um dogs crowd attendance in normal but round. I think uh, this year. This year. But this year is the most. Yeah, yeah. That's Plus, it. there was still people coming in at half time. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if you guys saw the videos. They, like were, they were buckling outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, it's crazy game, man. It's just um, the the Bulldogs are back. Like yeah. every journalist is saying that now. I think Buzz has got us in the top eight now. But like that win is the reason why we're going to win this comp. I, I want to get your opinions on on that, boys. Because <laughs> the <laughs> last time we met. About the pull your house thing, they, call, they, 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 they didn't call us crazy, yeah. but like yeah. they, they, in a way, yeah. But so, what, what's your opinions yeah, on the boys? Just about the game and just uh, about how the theory stands right now. Listen, we're still not there yet. Yeah, we're still got a lot to work on, but that defense and that grit, especially when we got twelve men on the field, Matt. I think I, I read the stat today. We haven't conceded any points with twelve men on the field in I think seven or eight games. Yeah, well, which is crazy. I didn't know yeah. that. Stat. In fact, we've actually put more points on than we've conceded, which is an insane. It's statistic. looking good, man. So we're doing better. We're getting better. The more days that go by, the more I'm buying into you. Put your house on the That's dogs. It, now, hey. listen, I'm not going to put my house on the dogs yet, but I'll give you a spare room. We'll take that. I was selling stats from sixty-one dollars down to thirty-one. Sports bet is even buying. Wow. Thirty-one That's now. Huge. That is thirty-one dollars. Wow. Wow. Thirty-one. Massive job. But like, yeah, like to your point, you're saying it. Like, we should have lost that game. Mm. That was our game to lose. You yeah, look. Uh, I hate to say the word ref again. Stuff the ref on their side, man. But you look at it. It was like. 10 to 1 penalties at one point of yeah. the game. And then yeah. towards the end, it was like three late penalties, of course. But yeah, dogs, man, they're, they're just killing it. Like mm. Stephen Crichton, you can see he's more involved in the game now. Like I feel we're yeah. using his side more, which is why like we've signed him. We don't want to use a player where we just use him for the sake of it. He's really getting more involved. Yeah. And you look at even Blake Wilson. Mm. For me, since the start of the year, a few fans are from Bulldogs saying that he's not the answer. I think he's not NRL material, but I've always said he's a try scoring machine. Mm. Like given the ball, he'll score a try. And that's what I love about Wilson. Yeah. Uh, I think in terms of the dogs, I have been very critical weekly, Mm. very critical, very outspoken weekly, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing that makes me so proud is how they dig in. Yeah. Yeah. That's the biggest thing for me. They dig in and they just give everything they've got. We don't have the biggest forward pack. You know, our halves were very questionable for a while. Yeah. And I said, as long as Hutchinson is in the side at halves, we're going to struggle. Mm. I always said that Sexton is no Ben Hunt. He's no Cherry Evans, but he just allows the game to be controlled a little bit better. He's a controlling half. Mm. He's come in and the point's been proven. Yeah, He's come in, he's controlled the tie better. Burden is allowed to do what he needs to do. But on Crichton, you mentioned Crichton yeah. earlier. I was so critical of that signing because I just had this feeling they were going to play him at fullback. 
Yeah. Mm. And I'm like, well, if he plays fullback, he is going to be done. Because I don't believe coming to a new system, going into fullback, a position he doesn't really play, was going to be good for us. The fact that he kept that, that he stayed at center is has been the best thing ever. It, defense, attack, unbelievable. His influence on the side. Him as captain, surprisingly. Yeah, it's working. It's working. Fire out. And and I, I was okay. questioning it. Yeah, yeah. A big, big question marks. Yeah. Big question yeah. marks. Yeah. But he's come in, he's lifted. He came exactly. into the preseason because he had an extended break after winning the comp and yeah. in, uh, a couple of internationals. He came in and goes, no, nah, I need to rip in. Yeah. Let me do what I can do for this club. He's been influential for us. He's been huge. Um, it's allowed Burden to, like I said, Burden to can, like, unlock this game. Kikau has started yeah. to show yeah. promise yeah. of why we signed him for the money we signed him on. Yeah. The best signing of the year, I by, say, by far, I think, current. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. You can argue, yeah. 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 He has been yeah. unreal. When we got him, we got Connor Tracy. Preston. I got pumped. Preston, another great yeah. year so far. Unlucky with a couple of injuries, but we're starting to be resilient. We're starting mm. to have that dogs of war mentality again. Exactly. Yeah. That's what we've missed for so long. 100%. And it's you know, it's great. It's that, changed yeah. because of the the locker room, right? Yeah. They're bringing in all these greats. They're bringing in all these boys that mm. know what it means to be a yeah. bulldog, yeah. and they're drilling it into them. And that's what we've been crying out. We need players that know yeah. the Bulldogs culture, and that's what yeah. Gus has done. He's integrated the youth plays into the squad, and that's yeah. what you're mm. seeing the winning mentality in yeah. recent and that's, weeks. That's why I think that performance alone, when all the odds are against us, yeah. that's it. That is why we're going to surpass a lot of teams come final time. Mm. Uh, and I truly yeah, and say we that, for bro, that game when too. you got Terry Lamb in the locker room saying that yeah. was the most gutsiest performance I've ever seen, you know you're doing something yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. What 100%. about Parramatta? Do you reckon their season is done? Yeah, I, I think so. You reckon it's season's done? done. Yeah, it was done before this game. It was done. The fact that they only had three wins this year. Um, way before they lost BA. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I yeah. think it was gone I was, way before that. I, th I was saying, I think if they had won this game and then if they had were to beat Roosters, I think that would have been a chance for top eight. Because no, they're no, building momentum. No. Because think about it, they're ten points now. If they yep. win the next two games, that's fourteen points. And top A is currently like 16, 14 points. So mm. if they had got themselves that win, I think they could have been in contention. But again. the problem with Parramatta, <coughs> and I am always one to advocate against Parramatta because yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of feelings right there. Right for so. Right for so, of course, <laughs> very good sir. Yeah. I mean, but the the thing with Parramatta is that their club is. A basket case. We all talk about the Tigers being a basket <laughs> case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, right. it is. You're right. It's right. 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 Jim Sarateros is a tweaker. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, no, the people right. that are at the top don't yeah. know how to run it. Like, how yeah. do you blow not signing Bennett? Yeah, yeah. 100%. How do you go, how do you go in your boardroom, discuss, oh, yeah, no, nah, we're not going to sign Bennett. We're going to give Bear another opportunity. He's yeah. had 10, 10 and a half years, all due respect. Yeah. And then they go, oh, we're going to squander that opportunity. And then when they realize, oh, you know what, maybe we should have a crack at Bennett because we could have a chance, yeah. it's too late. Uh, that, uh, the way they run yeah. the club at the top, it's it's garbage from top to bottom. I think they're running out of options for coaches. I think Barrett will be the coach for some reason. I don't think as long as he's options. the coach, they won't be winning for another thirty eight years. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. But look, in terms of Parramatta and their finals hopes this year, it's too little too late. They need yeah. nine of their next yeah. eleven or twelve. But look, it's but, a tough task. Uh, but tough with task. that game, Gutho and Moses did make a difference, like huge. A, 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 a huge difference. Huge. But they, they wouldn't shut their mouth in the process. But oh, the days. It is that's just, right. that's just his he, character. That's all he does. He complains to the yeah. refs. He tries to get things going his way. It doesn't happen. But they don't have a winning winning culture anymore. No, no. Yeah, they, they, don't have, they don't have the co coaching staff they need anymore. They're going to be a rebuilding club for another that's five it, like, months. Mm. Again, we were in a period where we were like rebuilding and now it's like swapped around way back and then. They, they like to talk about that premiership again. window, how, yeah. how closed or open it is. It's fully closed. No, it's fully closed. Yeah, it's I done. mean, it's done. Yeah. in 2022 when they win the grand final, and of course they lost a few of their stars, right? I can understand that. But since then, it's there's been no hope. Yeah. Parramatta have always been one player away from actually winning a premiership. They always needed one, they just needed one superstar to change that side. So like when Manu was off contract a few years ago, Paramount should have thrown everything at him. Mm, 100%. If they threw everything that, that, that at, right. at Joey Manu at that time when he was off contract before he re-signed with the Chooks, we could be sitting saying, we can't believe that in our, in our lifetime Paramount yeah. won a cop. They, no, all, they've been, all they've needed is one superstar to break the game for them. Yeah, they've never had point. it. Yeah. And look, I mean, Gutho Moses, I watched them at Johnny Manor Cup last week oh, right, uh, against yeah. the Sharks. Yeah. yeah. Mate, the influence in that side, it's huge. We can't deny that. Yeah. At the moment, I feel like it's just a little too late. Because they do have a great squad. Like, Paramount on paper is such an incredible team. It's just, I feel now the coach is the problem for me now. Yeah. Because yeah. Brad Arthur, I think his time, like, wasted, of yeah. course, spent 10 years at the club. Yeah, 10 Something years, around that. 11. And it was just wasn't work for him. Mm. And they need a change. So They yeah. needed a change. And I think what's important as well is that CEO came out, Jim Santana, and he was like, oh, look, you know, we're going to look at whether it's a rookie coach or whether it's someone that's not even part of the code. 
Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. On, please, yeah, please, yeah. please, yeah. please, yeah. sign Barrett, yeah. please. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. imbecile. I reckon. I reckon. Really he's the I reckon they're. they're, they're I think they're resigning Barrett now for sure. I think they're. Like, I think Look, it's, I, it's personally, done. like, all as as much as I love to rip on him and all yeah, that. Yeah. I don't think they will sign Barrett. I think like a Hane or a Wiles will probably come in and, and shake it up yeah. because Bellamy keeps extending. True. Yeah, yeah, every yeah. year, and Wiles was like, I want to go succeed. Yeah. Bellamy. And Bellamy's like, so I'm, maybe he'll I'm, go I ain't going nowhere. Like, I ain't leaving. I thought they were. Weren't they going to interview the uh, the union coach or Michael the wallet? Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they've got big wraps on him. Yeah, yeah, huge wraps on yeah. him. And the, I think the relationship between him and Mitchell Moses from that time in Lebanon will actually play a, a big part in mm. him actually potentially joining. The I club. think it's between him and Barrett. Yeah, yeah I, I, I truly think Barrett that, takes yeah. it. I, I, hope, I don't. I, don't, I, I don't hope know Barrett right. takes that as a Dodgers yeah. fan. Yeah, because, oh, yeah. Mate, yeah. You want to see him lose. enjoy that? <laughs> uh, I don't think Barrett in his two experiences will make a difference at the club. Yeah, no, yeah, no, I, 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 I don't reckon. But I'm surprised he's he won against Sharks that one game. Like you know, yeah. Well, you oh, had, no. had Gutho yeah. Moses back. Yeah, I mean, true. it was and yeah. they were missing Hines. It was inevitable. Yeah. Like I, I thought, any yeah. win for Parramatta is just based on their squad, not himself. Mm. Uh, that's Fair how, enough. That's but how I anyways, it. let's move on to State of Origin. <laughs> wasn't a great, yeah, wasn't really a great game, man. I don't. Yeah, let's give it. Let's give it. But we had to talk about it. Ten to thirty-eight. Queensland beat us in our backyard, man. Mm. What are your opinions about the game, boys? What do you expect? Yeah, Seriously, bro. What do you yeah. expect? Like they say it every year, Queensland knows about origin. They have the spirit of origin or that harakat. Bro, we lost a player seven minutes into the game and it was downhill from there. Mm. There was, it was just, they, they keep calling it a gutsy effort and it was such a brave game by New South Wales. And yeah, I guess so, but... The way I saw the game, Queensland p played rubbish compared to how we played well. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. Uh, like, I, what saying. I, I should have I should have seen Queensland put fifty on us. Yeah, but they just weren't playing well. They weren't taking their opportunities. New South Wales is in a slump, and I've got a big fear that we're going to be in a slump for a new, a next few years. Again. Oh, bro, I, I was saying yeah. the same yeah. thing. Too, yeah, yeah, man. It's uh, what, are you, what are your opinions on it? So that the game the was game. lost when the side was picked. Yeah, fair. Yeah. Yeah. You, weren't, you weren't happy with the side, were you? Nah, not at all. Especially. So Ali, uh, on our podcast, we yeah. had a brief chat about Origin, <laughs> and I said Sawali won't make an impact. Mm. He made an impact. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I, I, I did get it wrong. I did get it wrong. Well, bad. Just in a, diff just in a different, just in different direction. Yeah, yeah. I, I just think with the side that was picked, some of the the like New South Wales don't get Origin. We, yeah, we haven't got and, and you know what? As New South Wales Welshman, but no, no, we don't get. We origin, don't get it. Man. No, no, no. Hundred. It was created by a Queensland um, yeah. player. Oh, who was Arthur Beaton? Was it? Yeah, they created the great like. Yeah, the great Arthur Beats man, like they get origin. They know what yeah. it is. We about. don't get it. Slater yeah. is a winner. Yes. In everything he does, yeah. from top to bottom, he's just a winner. Maguire. <laughs> like, Come on, bro. We took the Tigers coach to be our coach for Exactly, this well. exactly right. Yeah. I didn't like look, I don't want to speculate too early, but you're right. From Tigers to Origin. But the reason that he got the gig was because of how well he did for New Zealand. Yeah, true. And but, you look at but, but, but the difference Rose between two. him going in New Zealand, sorry, I cut you off, but yeah, the no, difference between him going so well in New Zealand is because that took years. Mm. He was yeah. there for years, he built it yeah. up, yeah. and they, they went off that performance where New, Ze New Zealand beat Australia 30 nil yeah. last year to be like, well, okay, this guy can make a difference for New South Wales. Potentially, but you've got to get it right from the outset. You've got to choose yeah. the right team. You've got to choose the right yeah. team from the who, outset. Who chooses a player that's on their way out of the game? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, yeah. Like, so, that's so true. You're and so checked out, you're going to play Origin and make an impact, mate. It, it, it doesn't, but I want to talk about that send off. Do you think it was a send off? I do. Yeah, you, yeah, you think? yeah. I think it was a send off, bro. Oh, I feel like that doesn't feel. That's like not. That was. I was, I was very. I was very adamant it was a send off because look, the reason it's a send off is because it's, it's shoulder to the head. You can't do it anymore. Yeah. yeah. What the NRL are failing in, and what they're ruining Origin in the fact that there were so many things to consider from the hit that are now gone by the wayside because yeah. oh, shoulder to the head. Yeah. Mm. He was slipping, so while he got down low. When you've committed to making the tackle as committed as Suwali was, because he was very committed, you can't just back out. 100%. Yeah. And that's like most high tackles in the game as yeah. it is anyway. So for me, I get why they sent him off. It ruins origin to a degree, definitely. Because yeah. we're just playing catch up for right, the rest of the Half the crowd yeah. left at half time. A lot yeah, of the crowd were right. happy. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there were so many factors to consider. Do I think send off was the right call, considering how hard he hit him in the head and the way it panned out? I guess I guess it was. Bro, but the way he dropped, mate, the way bad. he dropped, and, yeah. and slow mo doesn't help. But him. like, yeah, it stuff, doesn't help. No, yeah, yeah, you're right. Stuff slow mo has ruined rugby league. Yeah, I tell it, you. Really it really has. It has, man. No, to be honest, but like for me, state of origin, it's not a send off. 
I still think it was a look normal NRL round send off like why why but why we, of uh, uh, level, but like I this, get it. this is a moment where you just ruined the game seven minutes in like mm, even yeah. like a lot of NRL experts saying like Queenslanders specifically like Cameron Smith yeah. Jonathan um Paul Vorden that was saying that it's state of origin. You have to let the game like these sort of tackles happen. Like yeah, it yeah. just for me unacceptable just for the origin just to slide like that and just we lost the series from there. I, I completely understand that argument. Yeah, but bro, you look at Walsh. He wasn't getting up. I I genuinely thought that we we're gonna have another McKinnon situation. Yeah, yeah right. It You're was right. a bad yeah. tackle, but like stuff the slow mo. I'm talking the very first time I saw the hit, I bad. yelled. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what happened? Yeah, bro, he was too high. Yes, he was slipping. But bro, you don't need to be putting that much into that yeah. when uh, that early in the game. Bro, Martin did the same type of hit in the second half, and he went lower, smacked him in the chest, and the guy could. But the yeah. difference is, yeah. sorry, right? The difference is he didn't slip. Yeah. Yes. Walsh yeah, did. I agree. So like, as you, to your points, that he already committed to the tackle. Yeah. Yeah. It was it's already good. going in. So like, it's it's I, I get why. Like, yeah. if that happens, yeah, you're gonna have to rule on it. But I at the same the time, man, it's like. I think it's if like Walsh slipped, gets man. up, I think if Walsh gets up, different story, maybe different story. Yeah, you're I right. Think that's the it's biggest. Yeah. The, the problem that we're having. There's two problems with the NRL right now yeah. when it comes to high shots. It's they look at the reaction of the players, yeah, and obviously like they see it slowed down, and, yep. and they see how what, what happens in slow mo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But another <laughs> thing is that at the end of the day, state of origin, Test football, standard rugby league, English Super League doesn't matter. Under sixes to under seventy fives, yeah, doesn't matter, right? At the end of the day, player welfare comes into play. Yeah. And they will overlook they'll look at player welfare over everything else. Now, do I think now obviously you watch shows like 316, you hear the inputs and that, and they're like, oh, you know, there should be like a someone to kind of like stand by. Mm. So if Swali gets sent off that early in the contest, you so should just be able to blood someone else in. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. heard about oh, that. Yeah. Like I don't mind the concept, but at the end of the day, you're 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 not being punished for doing the wrong thing at the end of the day. Because Wally obviously he got sent off and he got there for four weeks. Yeah. But they go, but well, we want the game to continue and have 13 on 13. But at the end of the day, you do something wrong, you need to be punished for it. So yeah. like, there's, there's so many things that go into it. But at the end of the day, regardless of what it's looking like, player welfare will always come first. Yeah. yeah. And that's as much as we don't want it to be, especially in state of origin. But then at the end of the day, and like, but like I can sit here and throw you something. At the end of the yeah. day, you play the sport, it happens. Yeah. yeah, it does. It's a contact sport. Yeah. Look, that's game two is coming in two weeks. What changes would you make? So first of all, would you even put Ed Edwards or Tedesco? Tedesco played well, man. He was good. He, he, he played was well, decent. but I think, sure. I think you give Edwards the shot. I think you put him in there. I think you put Burden on the squad and not as 18th man. Yes. And yes. Latrell comes in for Swali. Would you put Burden centre or like 5'8 position? Because Moses and Lawai are potentially the next uh, house for the, the game two, but is Burden a shout for 5'8? Or did Lawai do enough in game one to earn his spot again? I thought Lawai was pretty solid. He was good. Played amazing. I, I think, mean, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, one of the best he, players on the field. I that agree. Night, yeah. But the reason was because Hines was that bad. Exactly. Hines was oh, horrendous. He, was so bad. He, he had one kick to Lomax and he scored Detroit. Yeah. That, was, that was the only good kick he had all night. Yeah. And everyone also talk about the yeah. impact of the game. We talk about how New South Wales lost within seven minutes, whatever. We yeah. lost the game before that. And I'm yeah. not talking about like making out like the team selections mm. or whatever, but Hines' first kick went dead. Mm. Like, Put a left field kick in, left foot kick in, and it was too much. And they got a second tackle set, and they scored as soon as we gave them that. Yep. Yeah, that's a big play. Yeah. Like I, I would, I call for that play last tackle for the dogs. Yeah, like bro, don't go kick it and try to catch it and be heroes. Just yeah. go get a repeat set. But he kicked it too deep, and because he kicked it too deep, the game was really lost in that moment. And everyone's like, oh, but you know, Hines would have played different if Sawali was there. You know what? Probably, but no. with, without him being there. You should see how Hines was positioned in some of the plays. He was way too close to dummy half and a lot of the attacking plays. Looked very, like there was a bit of a slump. So for Burden to come in, he'd have to come in at 14 or center. It depends on the troll. Yeah. I, we, okay, yeah. Okay. I, I wouldn't pull the troll in. Okay. I, 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 I would as a player, but I think there'll be another Sawali type situation where he'll get sent off. Then especially yeah. his his history right now, especially yeah. this year. How can you count on this player so in I delivering? Agree, I agree with that. But then who do you put there? True. Uh, but I, like, I want to pull the troll. I would, like, my mind says the troll, 
Yeah, yeah I'm but just, at I, the same I, time, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't put him. I think I'm, I'm, I want to put him as well. Yeah. I'm turned off him yeah. as well, but there's no other choice at the moment. Bro. It's like, game two. Unless it's, you put, put Burden in centers, but then he's sort of wasted there. And he's True. for me, Latrell Mitchell's the one play Queensland can't stand when they come against. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they've admitted it a few times. Latrell Mitchell, I think he's the answer for for game two. I think he can really hype the players. And that right hand side, when he plays Ojan, he really causes so much problems for the defense of Queensland. Yeah, he's that one player that they wouldn't want to verse at all. I watched Latrell play on the weekend against the Gold Coast Titans. Yeah. And that was the first performance in years that I've seen the troll just play rugby league. Not get into any little scuffles because obviously Fafita and Walker were going at it all game. Nothing, no mucking around. He came to do a job and did it very, very well. That's the troll we need in origin. Yeah. Yes. All right, yes. Get a couple of scuffles here and there. But that's the troll we need. If he's not going to be our center, it'll have to be Burden. If Burden goes to center, we need a utility on the bench. Yeah, it makes no sense. So my opinion would be, in an ideal world, if the troll got his was in a better frame of mind, I would still probably I agree with you. I'd probably put the troll in there at three and get Burden at fourteen to be that utility, not Hudson Young, yeah. who was going to play yeah, Sunday and, and just. I don't was think useless. he's uh, state of origin level. Hudson Young, I think he's a great player for any like yeah. club no, wise. I, uh, for me, not state of origin. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. But there's a lot of players in that side that didn't play to their potential. Uh, exactly. Olakwatu, very quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Pass yeah. rolled over again. I think it was, players. but like. We're backtracking a bit, but like it really, that send off really set the momentum for the it game. Did, did, yeah. A lot of missed tackles, not like we, we, we weren't completing sets. I just, it, it all came down to that one moment. And um, I feel like game two will be a, a different scenario. I you feel like the pens were selected. Corusa the the comes selected. in. Yeah. Corusa and Cook, Cook utility or Corusa utility. Nah, I Robs disagree. Robson keeps it. Can I be honest? Robson was outstanding. He was yeah, good. He, he, he was good. very good. The only thing that we missed was at times where, where the defense was caught lacking. He only made maybe two or three runs. Obviously, Corsair or Cook would obviously dominate that and they can build off that extra 10, 15, maybe 20 metres. I thought Robson was outstanding for given the circumstances and playing the whole 80. My opinion would be <coughs> Latrell would go into three and Burden at 14. And if Latrell doesn't get selected, I'd go Burden at three and Connor Watson at 14. Oh, Connor yeah, Watson. Yeah, yeah, Watson. yeah, yeah. He's I mean, been, he's, he's, been, he's playing some he's good football. Good. I know he's been out the last few weeks with a throat injury, but yeah. we need a utility who can cover more than the yeah, couple of positions we've got. Our bench had no utilities on it, bro. No, yeah, no. The utility yeah. was Ken yeah. McInnes at yeah. starting 13. Yeah, it was ridiculous. That he was going to be, he could play lock nine or six. Yeah. yeah. He wasn't I mean, the best McInnes that day, was he? I don't from, know. I watched like the game twice. Yeah. So I watched the game live, went a half an hour and I watched it again to make, right. sure I was, yeah. make sure I was living as fine as he was. And also because yeah. I'm, I'm cooked. But <laughs> besides the point, McInnes, I didn't see much of him. He didn't do terrible. He played 47 minutes. Very average. Wasn't noticeable. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't noticeable. Yeah. Just a standard Ken McInnes performance. Uh, Jack Dubovic played the like, had the exact same impact. Yeah. Even Cameron Mo should be back. He played on the weekend. Yeah, his name on oh, the bench. His, his name on the bench, so he should be good. Uh, but yeah, let's move on to the round fifteen tips. Uh, heading to this week, the first game is uh, Sharks and Dolphins. Well, I'm I'm first of all tipping? I'm tipping Sharks. I think at home, Nico Hines back. I still think there could be an upset in Dolphins, yeah. but I think I'm just gonna go Sharks. I'm gonna go Dolphins. Dolphins. Ooh, right. I'm, I'm, I'm tipping Dolphins. I, I I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm still about that idea that Sharks are pretenders. Mm. They'll, they'll lose at home. I agree. I agree. Yeah, they, they are I the biggest agree. pretenders right now. Home, yeah. So I didn't understand why they were at number, like their first position at the start of the year up until a couple of rounds ago. Yeah. Once they, they got belted they by a, Panthers, I knew for a they fact They had an easy run at the start. They did, They've had a very, very, very easy draw. They, yeah, they have. Yeah. They have yeah. they they smoked everyone, yeah. but none of the, the teams they smoked were in the top eight. They beat Melbourne without Hughes Munster. They beat... Was a... Bro they beat Broncos too. They beat Broncos as well. Without, like, Without no Walsh, Walsh Reynolds. Reynolds. I mean, of course you're going to win those type of games. You know what I mean? Roosters it's was the impressive one. Roosters. Yeah, the Roosters game was- their best when, one. when they yeah, won that game, bad. I was like, okay, yeah. you know yeah. what? There could be something here. Yeah. Then they got smoked 42 nil at home. I'm like, okay, they're taking it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. going to So who are you tipping? Who tipping? My tip, Dolphins. Dolphins. Yeah. Dolphins. Yeah. Uh, Anthony is going for uh, Sharks and Samuel's going Sharks as well. Next game, Raiders and Cowboys. Raiders. For myself, Raiders, Raiders. I'm going Raiders as well, Bill. Um, who did I tip again? You got it. Well, there? you said Raiders. Yeah, Raiders. Raiders. I think and Cowboys yeah, were very yeah, disappointing. Raiders. Cowboys. Yeah. Cowboys very disappointing issue. It's just the yeah. defense yeah. are letting them down again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're not yeah, going to win. Good game. attack, but yeah. just a defense. Very important. Yeah. But defense. without a good defense, you're not going to win a lot of games. Ah, and Samuel and Anthony also went Raiders. Next game, that should be an entertaining one: Rabbitohs and Broncos. 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 Yeah, I think they'll take it. Okay. They're due for it. Stat. Stat. Um, I think Rabbitohs. Yeah, same. I'm going Rabbitohs as well. I think they'll, I think I they'll think turn it. Are they, they obviously the Gold Coast aren't the greatest team, but they really turned it on. Yeah, and, and I think that was the game they needed to turn their season around. I think Walker playing some good footy again. I know after the bye they'll get a couple of boys back. At the moment they're still being being a bit depleted, but if you can get the Troy that played on the weekend and the Cody Walker that played on the weekend, 
And Broncos, they look, there's still no Walsh from that concussion. Yeah. yeah. They're still down Adam Reynolds. Um, Corey Oates, I believe, oh, he is named, but I think he's got a knee issue. I mean, there's a couple of things in there I'm not liking. I think anyway. In their last two it. games, they scored 42 points, yeah. So yeah. which is incredible. They're, they're not the the Broncos aren't the Broncos of last year, man. Oh. They're, 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 they're really the depleted team. It's Just hard with injuries. They're very, yeah, they're it's very hard. Hard. It's always injuries. They're man. very tired and fatigued. But I don't know. I think I'll take it. Yeah. So, uh, I'm, I'm Samuel I'm is going Broncos, and Anthony is also going Broncos. Next game, Tigers and Titans. Titans. Yeah. Titans. Hundred percent Titans. Start. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go Titans. I think um, Tigers have made some interesting changes this week. Coruscant at halfback. Yeah. Well, they've got to change it up. I mean, yeah. you're not getting losing streak. Something's got to oh, give. Man. You know what I mean? Caesar comes back in, which is timely after that suspension. Yeah. Um, look, I, th- I sort of think it's enough. I think Titans will bounce back and yeah. they'll, they'll do it pretty convincing. I'm going, yeah, Titans, I'm going well. Titans. Uh Samuel, Titans, and Anthony's the only one going Tigers. Surprisingly. Yeah, there you go. Anthony uh, went Tigers. Why'd you yeah. go Tigers? Why'd you go Tigers? Yeah, fair. Okay, yeah. fair enough. I mean, they drew. Uh, next yeah. game uh, in New Zealand, Warriors and Melbourne Storm. Yeah. Who'd you go, Shabu? Uh, me, I went Warriors. I think Melbourne haven't really impressed me this year at all. They started the season well, but I feel Warriors, Sean Johnson's back, Harris is back in the squad. So, yeah, I think they'll win again. If they played like they did against the Knights, they're definitely losing. I'm yeah, well. that was a bad performance from mm. Melbourne. Yeah, yeah I'm going to go NZ. Up the wires, baby. Uh, <laughs> I'm going Storm. I'm going Storm. Storm? Uh, yeah, um, I feel yeah, like, right. yeah. I, I judge both storms that they, they've always got something that <laughs> other teams don't, man. They, they've, they've got that mentality, man. I'd, yeah. That's it. They're, they're going over the line. Uh, Anthony went storm and uh, Samuel's gone warriors as well. Mm-hmm. Now, okay. this is the who you got for this week. Uh, we're doing the Parramatta and Roosters game. So let's bring up the, just the scores. Okay. So basically, I don't know if you noticed. So the who you got is we've got, we pick a game every week yep. and we just do a score prediction, anytime try scorer, first try scorer, uh, men of the match, and bold prediction. That's what we do for the end. It's like a point system. We, we, watch, right. we watch your show, mate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, for <laughs> just, just for the viewers. Just, just for the viewers. Just for the viewers. Well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's go. So what do you go, Bill? Um, 32-18, Roosters. 32-18. What are you going, Ray? I'm going 28-16. Okay, Roosters. for Roosters. Um, I think this game will be a lot closer than what people are anticipating. Yeah. I'll probably go 24-16, Chooks. Okay. Okay, yeah. I'm going 26-18, Roosters. Samuel's going uh, 30 to 16 Roosters. And Anthony's gone 42 to 12. So a big win for Please. the Roosters. Uh, anytime try scorer, Ray? Tedesco. Tedesco? Um, or is going to pick Teddy? Well, <laughs> bro, he's <laughs> scored, I think, the last five games. He's versed yeah, them. Yeah. And he will need, if you want Sojourn, he will need still, to like, still step Still on form, man. He's still in form. He's still in form. Yeah, he's in form. Yeah. 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 Good, football. Well. good football. I think for me, um, could see another Angus Crichton try. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Um, I went Dominic Young anytime try scorer. Bill? I yeah. uh, went Manu. Manu, yeah, good yeah. shout. Uh, yeah, Samuel's also went Angus Crichton, and Anthony's gone for Joseph Manu. Our uh, first try score array. Uh, do I go to? P- I go on uh, Dominic Young. Dominic yeah, Young, yeah, they'll go off that wing. Um, I'm gonna go Sevo. Sevo, yeah. yeah, that's a good shout. Uh, Bill, I uh, went uh, Penasini. Penasini. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm yeah. going Sevo. Samuel's going Sevo, and Anthony's going Dominic Young. Our uh, men of the match. Ooh. Man of the match. Well, if we're going to go for a Roosters win, um, man, I don't know. It's a tough one, eh? Yeah. Oh, for me, I'm, I'm going with, um, Joseph Manu. Yeah, man that was the, the hardest one for me. I didn't know who to pick. That's tough, yeah. yeah. Who are you going, Bill? I went Kiri. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's I feel a good like one. Yeah, he'll have a good game, yeah. I reckon Kiri. Walker. Sam Walker, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I reckon he's going to show up against He's, he's been playing good lately, he's, man. He's, he's been so good. He's all right, yeah. yeah. I'm going to- yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's a good he's a face right here. <laughs> Welcome to the area, happy bit. <laughs> um, I think for me, a bit of a unique one. I'm gonna go Connor Watson. Yeah, I, I think okay. Brendan Bre- Bre- Smith dropped this week. Yeah, yeah. For you know his off field shenanigans, issues, we'll, yeah. which we'll get into probably a bit later. But I think Connor Watson. I think he'll turn uh, up this week. And our uh, man of the match for Samuel's Angus Crichton and Anthony's going Victor Radley. Our uh, bold prediction. This is the last one. For me, I'm gonna go Sam Walker field goal anytime. Okay. okay. Yeah. Anytime field goal. Bill? Be yeah. same boys. Oh, you, you can oh, go whoever wants to right. Um, I reckon Parra will be winning at the half and then then get dominated second okay. half. Okay. Good one. Um, Terrell made double. Okay. Ooh, yeah. That's yeah. A, He's been a try scorer this be year. Bold. Yeah. Like if he gets the game time, I can yeah. see a double. Yeah, yeah, Is he like starting that. or off the bench? Off the bench. Off the bench okay. Exact score. Like exact score. Sixteen six. Roosters up half time. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. That's Sixteen. I, I don't know. I like that. I like you those really numbers. like to go out there with everything. Yeah. He loves everything. everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah, everything. Uh, yeah. Samuels <laughs> went. It was to score first try in the first five minutes, and Anthony Dominic Young to score a hat trick. Yeah. That's yeah. a wrap to uh, who you got. Nice. 
Uh, now, as you know, you guys, breaking news to Vita, Panga Jr. is off to the Dolphins. So we all saw that coming, this, I guess. We all saw that coming. Oh, I saw that coming. Did you seen the yeah, video, yeah, mate? We've yeah, seen yeah, the video. Yeah, we've seen the video. Back, back when he first announced he was well, leaving. Mate, over here, he spoke to Phil Gould about it, mate. That's how much he spoke. Ah, but the question is, will he join Bennett next year at Rabbitohs? No. No, you reckon Dolphins for a couple of years? Look, I think Dolphins for now. The reason I don't see him going to Rabbitohs is purely for the fact that he just went back to Queensland. Yeah. He's got a lot of his family there. He was clearly struggling in Sydney, him and his partner were really struggling in Sydney. Realised that, you know, going home would probably be best the best case scenario. Tavita Pango has a lot to prove. Yeah. You know, for someone that has mouthed off as much as he has. Oh, doesn't right. want to listen, listen to halfbacks. Doesn't want to yeah. listen to what coaches. I'm my own boss. Unfortunately, my, my he's parents, become a joke. My parents forced, forced me, me into the game. He's yeah. become a joke. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. become the joke yeah. of, of both both sports. Yeah. Both professions has become a joke. He mm. liked your comment too as well. That, that was weird. That was so weird. Like, what comment? Uh, no, because um, you mentioned the Gus, the, the yeah. clip. I, I yeah. clipped it with Gus about talking about Tavita. I wasn't hating on the guy. I was just speaking you my opinion. That I was like, like as a fan, I don't want to see a player lie yeah. like that and then go to play for the South Logan Magpies. Yeah, yeah. But he liked the video and liked my comment about <laughs> like not, okay. like hating on you him. You said in a way. Uh, we saw that coming. Like we saw, said, it, yeah, coming yeah, yeah. saw that coming. But do you know do you know why he would have liked the video to like as his motivation? Yeah, yeah. to be like, exactly. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. like he's yeah. like, you know, I can't wait to Shut prove up. this imbecile wrong. Boom, but bro, like boys, I want to get you a, like like. About this whole situation, I've said this many times on the pod. Why isn't the news headlines Tavita Pengai blatantly lies to rugby league? Like, why is it? Oh, he's signed for it's Dolphins and headline, move on with the day. Headline news. Why, bro? Like, that's one of the smallest things that NRL has to worry about, right? True, now. bro. When yeah. it comes to player relations and players in the public eye, this yeah, he's back flipping on contracts and he's uh, lying through his teeth to every club that speaks to him. This is the least of their problems, bro. Yeah. They've got they've got drugs. They've got uh, d DVs to worry about. They've got all this stuff. That they're not. They don't care. Yeah, fair. Plus, well, if if clubs are willing to pay for it, they're going to take them. Look at the Dolphins. They're willing to pay for it. It's Wayne Bennett. Yeah. It's Wayne Bennett factor. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we know yeah, that yeah. he's played his best footy under Wayne Bennett. Yeah, it, he. Look, I, I personally think he goes to goes with Bennett. I think he'll backflip. Huh? Yeah, really? after yeah, I'll give him a. Is he only signed for the rest of the year? Yeah, yeah. Is that, just, it's only one just year. For the year just yeah, so yeah. I reckon months, yeah. he goes with Bennett. Like he wants to play. He wants to play with him. I think he said it before. And if you want like constantly finals footy, you go of course to Wayne Bennett. I don't think yeah. Dolphins next year. Depends who they get. Mm. Could change, but if Wayne Bennett's leaving, I think. Why yeah, would you? Why would you sign? Him. He only signed for Bennett yeah. and exactly. Dolphins. Yeah. So, so now that Bennett, you take Bennett out of the equation from the Dolphins, you know, you know where he's going. He's gonna follow him. Yeah, but does he? But does Bennett want him over there? I reckon he wants him. I think they need him. They got that relationship. Well, no, yeah. I was say they need him, but I think they need forwards. You're yeah, right. They uh, need Rabbitohs him. Yeah, need they, they, they need forwards. Yeah, yeah. They need and forwards. on his best day, you said this before. Yeah, on I his best they, day, yeah. he's he the is, most damaging forward. Is. But you know what? When, when the last time we saw his best day was that game against the Cowboys before the Broncos. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes, man. That we was, never saw it at the Dogs. Yeah, never. We never. Uh, we saw it a bit at Penrith. Like he played some games at Penrith where we were like, oh yeah, like this is all right. Like if we can get that, if we get sorry, get that Penguin Junior to the Dogs, that'll make a difference. We never saw that. Yeah. The reason that the news bat an eyelid to Pango Jr. is because they know that something else is going to happen down the road. Mm, they know that this yeah. is just a bit of a laugh, yeah. with all due respect. Yeah. But the reason that they look at it that way is because he has become, unfortunately, a joke. Mm. Like he they the, left the dogs, you know, like big big sacrifice, 750K. I mean, yeah. It's pretty crazy, right? Yeah. Big money. Big sacrifice to then go be like, nah, I don't want some kids telling me what to do. I want to do my own thing. Went to boxing. He got KO'd. One, yeah, did one, he actually one, did one, it. two fights, got KO'd his last one. Yeah. But I think he's come back to go under Benner because yeah. he's, he just wants to be comfortable again. He yeah. tried to be uncomfortable for a little bit. Went, okay, he's, he's two wins, one loss in yeah. boxing. So it's not the worst record. Yeah, yeah. Some people don't have a win in boxing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 right right under the bus. <laughs> under the bus. <laughs> under the bus. <laughs> right under the bus. <laughs> I was thinking to myself this morning, <laughs> this guy's going to bring it up on the bus. <laughs> 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 nah. <Scumbag. laughs> That's all right. Um, but like he's not going to have a terrible record, but unfortunately he's portrayed himself to be a joke, mm. which is why everyone looks at him like, oh, what, he's moving again? Oh, yeah, it is what it is. Let's just put it out he's there. A, he's a throwaway. Yeah, he's bro. A throw oh, whatever. He's come back again. We know he's not going to do much, whatever. This is his opportunity to prove that he's going to change things. Yeah. This opportunity to not be back at the Dolphins, to be at the Dolphins, sorry, but back under Bennett to really make an impact and to really make a difference. Yeah. If he can't do it now under Bennett in these next six months, he won't go to Rabbit. I, I truly think he, he will leave again. I, I, I truly yeah. think that. I don't, I don't think he's lasting. This bloke can't be consistent for one no, week. No. He's got a, a mentality problem. Like he yeah. thinks he's bigger than the club. He's bigger than the yeah. players. And like you said, he doesn't like being told what to do. So that's the reason why he hasn't been successful in the game. But like if you're Bennett, how do you, 
like how do you know what you're getting yourself into? Like I think you don't know. One know. day he wake up, he wants to play, he wants to do ballet, I have and then leave the sport. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I know, I know. there's no, there's no like how do you how are you gonna put all your trust and your money into this one player and and get the best out of him? He's not. This is his test. Mm. See how he plays for yeah. the next few months. Do I want to take him over? Oh, if he screws up, stuff him, yeah. bro. All it's gonna take for this guy is one wrong, wrong well one wrong word to be said to him, and then game over. He's back to back flipping again. But Severo yeah. Pango will fold That's under what Bennett. I'm saying. He'll fold. Yeah, he won't speak out of line because yeah. Bennett will crush him. That's mm. why I think Bennett's a very experienced coach, and yeah, I yeah. think you know how to settle our Pango. He, he knows how he knows how to handle yeah, it. But mm. I don't put it past him to talk all the way behind Bennett's back around the locker room. This time when Bennett walks in like yeah. a like a high schooler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. You know that's that's how this guy. That's how I look at him. He's a high schooler. But he has yeah. to, if there's the time to step up, if he wants to go to Rabbitohs next year, because I know Rabbitohs aren't even looking at him. Ben is all looking at him for next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. looking at him for this week. Yeah. What can you do this week at South Logan or whichever affiliate yeah. club that he's got to play for? Is he playing this week? Or he's not? Um, yeah, when does he come in? Well, he can, he's technically available to play this week. Yeah, but now, I don't th- if he's in the squad, um, I think he's just training with him. He's getting ready to go for the ah, next okay. few weeks. Yeah, he, right. he, he wasn't named in the 22 this week. So he will. He so he, just, yeah. he needs some time in cup. Ben yeah. needs to see. Because I know he played two weeks ago and he played pretty well. Yeah, six or meters. Yeah, yeah. He, he was solid. And I think he played like near odd 60 minutes. Yeah, right. I could, yeah, I could yeah. be wrong, but yeah. he, he had a big big hit. Like he's still fit. Yeah, yeah. No. He had a big hit. It, it was just, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think, I think Bennett needs to see him get a, get consistent in the next few rounds. And I think if Dolphins start to get a bit depleted, he'll get chucked in there and go yeah. off the bench and have a bit of a laugh. Yeah, that very beautifully said. Now let's move in, moving on to Lachlan Galvin. He's asked for his release from the Tigers. <laughs> What are yeah, your that's opinions? That's the second time. Is that the second? Yeah, he's, it is the second, second time. time. That's time right. Yeah. I've, I, the, the, it was the first he, time he wanted he... to backflip, and then I heard that he wanted to stay, and now he wants to backflip. Yeah. Again. What are your opinions on it, boys? Uh, Hello. <laughs> <laughs> he's got yeah, lots of space. Stat. Stat this is, sp- put the volume. This down. is the problem. <laughs> this is the problem I have with player managers. They're ruining the game. Hundred yeah. percent. Isaac Moses. I've heard enough about Isaac Moses to know that he's a little bit how's it going, and he's <laughs> already been. There are times he's already been banned from the league from the things that he's done. Yeah. Look, I can understand Galvin is frustrated. I can understand that, you know, you're you're fresh out of school, you're coming, you're playing first grade. One, which is an absolute luxury, by the way. 100%. Right. To come in, 18-year-old, play first grade, that's amazing. <coughs> Shows how talented you are oh, as yeah. a player, yeah. right? There's yeah. big things ahead, right? But I understand you're going through a bit of a losing <laughs> trick. I understand that the club that you're playing for are in a bit of a shambles right now. It's a bit of a circus. But at the end of the day, this is rugby league. There's good times and there's bad times. Right now he's in the bit of the bad times. Player managers want to come in and just muck around with the players. They come in, player will be doing all right. Hey, but what if, imagine I can get you a couple hundred K more at another yeah. club. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine what you could do here. Let me go ask for your release. It's the, it, the player managers aren't there to benefit the player. So that they can pocket more out of their contract. Yeah. So Galvin, 18 years old, like the funniest thing that I read was like, Richard's are going to go speak to his parents. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's what needs to happen. Yeah, yeah. Play managers need to mind their own business, stay in their lane, and let the kid play his footy. Exactly. Now, for the t- Tigers that come out and said, oh, you know, like, yeah, he's been playing a bit with a fraction hand. But that's rugby league, bro. Yeah. You play with injuries all the time. 100%. Yeah. Like, wh- you get you play rugby league when you're six years old. You yeah. know what you're getting yeah, into. Yeah. It's cortisone sh- shots for a reason. Quarter, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is part of it. My problem is there's so many problems with this because it's player mm-hmm. managers. It's Tigers are really trying to build this squad up from the ground up and releasing players left, right, center. Richardson's going to England for a couple of weeks to try attract some forwards, but release some players at the same time. My problem here is Galvin needs to sign the deal. This is my biggest thing. You put pen to paper, you sign the contract. Correct. Yeah. Honor your damn deal. Yeah. If you can't honor your damn deal, don't sign the contract. Guys, yeah. Pengo about that. Exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Pen guy. yeah, yeah it's not yeah, that hard. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. player managers have this influence over players now, especially the young ones, because they know that they can manipulate them. Yeah. Like, oh, but why don't you go to Roosters? Get maybe an extra couple hundred K and you, you play for a good team. Or why don't you go to Penworth where you can be under a great side like that or a great system? Yeah. Stay where you are, learn your trade, play well, prove that you can fight out of this. You can get through this point at the Tigers or fucking get through anything at playing at rugby mm. league. But I just think the whole player manager coming in, asking for the request on behalf of the player is disgusting especially when there's no need for a release to be made. Galvin saying, apparently there was rumors Galvin was in the change room saying, I can't wait to leave, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I've been saying. He's 18, he's a bit of a grunk. He doesn't understand how it all works. Whatever. But at the end of the day, my issue with all this is that Tigers are building themselves, have got themselves in a massive hole. They're just trying to find a way to get out. He's already been promised and guaranteed the six jersey next year when Luai comes in. Yeah. So Tigers are doing what they can and actually being very accommodating to this 18-year-old kid. 
I will lose so much respect for him if he gets up and quits because Isaac Moses will go into his ear and, and, and decide, yeah, this is it. I'll, I'd lose my mind. Right, like the Tigers have fallen into this hole before. How, how many players? Josh Addo Carr. Uh, was it Mitchell Moses? And yeah. the Tedesco, team Tedesco. Tedesco. Woods, Pappenhausen. If, I reckon, mark my words, if Galvin goes, they've lost treasure. Yeah. They've yeah. lost their treasure. 100%. Sorry, go. No, no, go, go, go. Bro, I, like you said, that's the Tigers' problem. They cannot hold a squad together at long enough to do something with it. Yeah. Bro, Marshall's not doing the worst over there. From what I'm yeah. hearing, the system is getting better. But it's going to take time, bro. And the problem is these young 18-year-olds, they don't have the patience of a 25, 26-year-old yeah. to know that that's the game and you've got to work through it. But like that said, the player manager gets in their ear, says, hey, man, it's rough. They know how to talk to him. And that's what's stuffing up the Tigers so much. That all these players, as soon as they see they, – they're like deers in the headlights. Yeah. As soon as they see a problem, they're bouncing. No, and for me, right. look – Galvin's 18, like you said, and for me, again, he's he's playing his best foot and he can see that if I can get a better deal somewhere and play yeah. full time, he's going to enjoy his time. But for me, he's still young. And even if next year, yes, he's been guaranteed a spot into the squad next year, but say Aiden Caesar was to beat us number seven and Luan number six, I still think he should be signing that deal and don't put, oh, I've, I've been the best this year. He should be working his way to that position. Aiden Caesar, Caesar's experience. He deserves to be in that squad still. Yeah. Lawai's been in the game for like five to six years and worked his ass off. And now he's playing his three-peat winner. He's now got to offer a deal at Tigers. So it's import important for Gavin not to get too ahead of himself. He has to work himself way up. And then eventually when the time's right, he can start to uh, fight his way into the squad and ask the manager, I deserve this position. Yeah. He's still young to deserve that position. Part of me thinks that he's not the one asking the request. Yeah. Uh, Part of me thinks he's actually... Like, like, like I said, if those, what he said that the shares at halftime is true, yeah. right, bit of a dumb move. I actually think the problem here is Isaac Moses. I actually think that the problem is the player managers wanting out for their client, like I said, to get more money. Oh, in for sure. You, that's what yeah, it is, bro. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah, what it is, 100%. bro. I think Calvin's okay. Like, part of me thinks he's actually all right. Yeah. He's probably okay. And Shane Richardson even acknowledged, he goes, last time we let three players go, it ruined the club. And they still haven't gotten over it's it. Gonna happen he goes, I haven't gotten over it. It's gonna happen yeah. again. He's not letting it happen again. And Shane yeah. Richardson is a hard no CEO. Mm. He's already said that if any club tries to come and try to post their players like Uto Kamanu, yeah. off you go. Which also, Uto Kamanu, quick separate issue. The fact that Tom's been off him 900k a year, absolutely laughable. Yeah. Biggest laugh I've ever heard. Just when you think that they might have a bit of money to do something a bit better and maybe a bit more smarter, they want to go sign Uto Kamanu for 900 a year. What a laugh. Yeah. Just want to put that out there. But at the end of the day with Galvin, like you said, I agree with you. Play footy. Just go, do your job, and things will eventually change. Tides will eventually turn. You need to trust the process. You're investing into the future. That's right. Yeah. Like I know they're on a the losing future. streak, but like you've only played for like three months. And yeah, who you are really you? Want to yeah, hundred yeah. percent. No, like, you're right. Who you are you? Look at yeah. Bulldogs yeah. place, for example. So many young players. They've stayed there. Like Jake Avula, for example, stayed four years at the club, losing culture, and he didn't want to leave the club. That's what Gavin should be but having that stats, attitude. But to stats point, if that locker room. Uh, quote wasn't true and it's the player manager then you can't story. raise the of argument course, about the course, three months of course he, it's it, he's in his ear get that's a true. parent to slap him in the back of the head though. yeah yeah, <laughs> I think yeah. That's, the that's, best that's what's well. gonna happen this week they'll have a conversation this week with the parents and they'll yeah. be like all right listen like, <laughs> he needs he needs to get something signed yeah yeah parent, get, get permission to sleep and stay here yeah. <laughs> relax but, but uh, that's yeah. that's why that's what two cents on i just think it's silly yeah but anyways moving on uh brandon smith um mrs rooster's mid-season review now we've we've seen a lot of uh, stories online over the past year, past couple of years, players not getting focused about the game, not really fully committing to the game, even coaches these days. Now, Brendan Smith, man, do you think, what do you, what do you, what's your opinions about this, man? Like him missing the mid-season review? It's poor. Yeah. If you believe what he says, it was an accident. I was out with my family. I didn't realise it was on today. I thought we had the week off. It's it's laughable, man. He's he's checked out. It's such a yeah. cheese thing to do. Yeah, he's checked it out. It is very standard cheese thing to do, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like I said, the reason we get on podcasts like these and we give our two cents is because they literally lay it up for us. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Bro, they lay it up right. for us. Bro, like that's why there's Buzz Rothfield has a job. Yeah. Yes, because they that's lay why. it up. <laughs> they make it so easy. <laughs> yeah. It's dumb. Bro. And it can't be that hard to be a footy player. Besides the physicality of yeah, it, yeah. you show up to training, you show up to the meeting, you play the game, you that's go it. home. Done. Bro, it, exactly. That's he, all it is. Bro, he wasn't even going to be training that day. It was a short meeting about this is where we are and this is where we're going to be for the rest of the year. Let's get to work. Go enjoy the break. Yeah. And, and, and they would have told him like the day or two day before that they've gone a meeting about the mid-season mm. review bro, he's and he's just making it. It's on his schedule. Team, it's on his schedule, yeah, schedule yeah, that's what I'm Do you know what, you know what disappoints me? He came from a very hard-nosed club in Melbourne Storm where 
determination, hard work, being on time was, I'm going to say, probably the most basic of rules that they've really enforced. And mm. that's why Storm have the culture that they have. Mm. Roosters also have a very similar culture where success is inevitable if you're going to be at the Roosters. Yep. Look, if he goes and he says, oh, I went out with the missus. Like, he came out on the Buy Round podcast with James Graham and yeah. he goes, oh, I left my phone at home because my missus doesn't like when I'm out and I have my phone. Sure. <laughs> what are you doing? You're like, cars, do you do you do? Whatever you want. All right, but yeah. the fact that you can't be on top of it and be on top of the fact that you like you look at your schedule for the week yeah. and you can see that you've got something on. You can see that there is something required at the club that you need to be attending. Mate, this is it's yeah. like that for me. It's like, bro, how do you, how do you miss that? Yeah. Plus, don't don't tell me he's putting it in his calendar. The team is putting it in his yeah, calendar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. All right. So don't tell me I couldn't figure it out. I didn't know it was in the schedule. It was there. Yeah. You didn't want to be there. But does that does that show his lack of commitment to the team? Like, do, like what what's your reasoning? Like the true reasoning behind it? You reckon? He's over it. Look, you look yeah. at he's checked you, out for the year. You look at his yeah, past probably. too. Look, spoke on a podcast about his desire to play for Roosters and wear the jersey while contracted to Storm and also that white pa powder scandal with Munster. So you can see he has these moments within his career. As, as to my point, yeah. it's, it's a cheese moment. It's and a brain snap. That's yeah. another talent for me gone in the bin. I know he's still young in his age, but again, since joining Roosters, I haven't seen the best of Brendan Smith. Mm. He's really, really struggled living in a different city, being in a part of a different environment. Like, you know, we talk about players that move to different clubs and really struggling that first year. Yeah. And we talk about, look, you know, they need a bit of time. Like I was, I was going to give the example of Kiko, but he was injured. So it's a different story. But you talk about players that move in from the first year to a new club and you, a lot of the time they struggle. Like yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if Lua jumped seven next year to Tigers and, and struggled the first year, but yeah. then start to pick up as the years go on. It's pretty normal. Like it, it tends to happen because you're under a new system, new coaching structure, new structures mm -hmm. in your play and everything else and different players and different, you know, kind of mindsets. The thing here is, Brendan Smith still has had one, one maybe two good games for the Roosters. The invest, the the, the money they're putting in this guy, like AA fifty a year, is Stop not. Yeah. It's yeah. not little money. To the standard that he's playing towards, it's not good enough. Mm. I don't think he's checked out for the year. I think he's really struggling living away from Melbourne. I know that he's originally from um, Townsville, and I know he played his junior footy up there and everything else. But I really think he's just struggling to adapt to the Sydney lifestyle. It probably hasn't been as what he thought was going to be decent for him. Like every, in terms of the money, it's a crack of money. Yeah, but yeah. at the end of the day, you got to earn your paycheck. You got to prove why you're worth the money that you pay. And that's my issue these days, just going off topic about that being your worth. The, you know, these days clubs are playing big money and then they're not getting the best out of their players. Yeah. Because yeah. they're, they're only signing to your club for the money. Yeah. So it's just a business these days, rugby league. It, it is. This is why things like this is happening. He's taken the paycheck. Yeah. He's checked out for the year and that's it. Yeah. Yeah, but here's my thing. You're getting paid that money. I'm sorry. I don't care if you're struggling. Bro, you miss home, you're homesick. Get to work. Do the it's a job. Do the job. I get it. I get it. I'm, I'm not trying to be, you know, unempathetic or whatever, but do the job, earn your paycheck, work out the contract, and then go back home. He needs the thing for me. It's not for him being away from home and that I'm not giving it as an excuse. I'm saying that in the two years that he's been at the Roosters so far, he hasn't delivered. Now, there are obviously a lot of factors, but it's normal. You just need to live with what you've got. For me, I think Smith needs to be, and I don't know what his training style is like. I'm not going to see that clock on. I have no clue, but mm -hmm. he needs to be coming in earlier to training. He needs to be doing extras in the gym. He needs to be doing extras on the field. It's the little things that he needs to be doing, the, the extras, the staying back. Like you're talking about players now that will come in. Like we talked about Steve Crichton earlier in the podcast yeah. where he came early from his holidays and goes, I need to get straight into this. I need to work hard. I need yeah. to get myself instilled into this. That's the mindset Brandon Smith needs to have. And yeah. That's you know, and I think that's what it is. I think he starts doing the little things right, showing up to training on time, hell three hours earlier. Yeah. You know, because the players, his own teammates were coming out saying, yeah, you know, I come, like Victor Valley, I'm, I'm here three hours early. I can't stand being late. And yeah. this is the standard we have. It's not good enough. It needs to be a mindset change, which is very hard for a lot of players to have, like to change their mindset. But he needs to change his mindset on how he approaches what is just, whether it's diet, whether it's waking up in the morning, whether it's getting to training early, staying back, doing extras, making a difference on the field. This is what needs to hand in because I feel like right now, one more slip up in any capacity. He's done. He's got to be done. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I think that, I think that's what he really needs to focus on. Because he's not his worth. He's not the, the Roosters aren't paying him just to laze around like this and not you know show up to a mid season mm. review. I'm There's not a a sure of the exact quotes, but 
he said on the Buy Round podcast with James Graham that he's on his first warning. I think there's two more warnings after this. The second so one is a fine, the, the third fine, one's a sack. Yeah. The, third one, the third one's a sack, exactly. Yeah. That's it, man. Yeah. There's consequences to this stuff. But what, what the thing for me is you've come from a tight ship in Melbourne. You should be above everyone else in, 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 right. in everything that you do. He's won a premiership too, has he? Yeah, he's won, won like a premiership there. But like if, if, the, if, Melbourne, if Melbourne set the culture, if Melbourne have this culture of continual success and the little things of getting right, that should be implemented in you, one, as, as a human being, in the things that they teach you there, and two, as a player. Mm. But you know what the difference is between him from Melbourne and here? He doesn't got that extra paycheck, that the, 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 the extra money on top of what he's already earning. Yeah. You know, he's got, he's got a big sum now, man. Back to my point, bro, he's earning a lot of money at the Roosters and he's, he's checked out, man. He's comfortable. He doesn't care, he's too comfortable. When you're comfortable, man, yeah. you're, you're a fat cat. You don't care anymore. Yeah. Just I'm I'm getting my paycheck and I'm going to the exception of Stephen Crichton still smashing it for the doggies yeah. and a lot of big name players that earn that are still earning big money. You know they went to different clubs. You know they're still earning that big paycheck. You know they, there's 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 exceptions there, but that, that's yeah. in this situation, I really think I really think this is because he's 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 earned that big um big check and he's clocked out. Mm. Yeah, that could yeah. be the answer. But uh, yeah, but yeah, that's a wrap to league talk and now let's move to some wrestle talk with the boys. <laughs> All right, guys, now time for some wrestle talk. Uh, great chat, boys, with the other boys for League Talk. But first of all, before we get on to what we've got planned here, uh, Monday Night Raw was today. Um, it was a pretty good show, especially that um, started the show with Dominic and Liv Morgan. And it's starting to juice up that storyline. So what are your thoughts on what's currently happening with this storyline? It's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. I mean, I didn't think they were going to take it this direction when they first started it. Yeah. But I think they've struck a little bit of gold here and they've gone full swing with it. They've gone, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've gone full swing with it. She's great. She's doing really well. She knows how to hold the crowd and this guy's having fun. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's just having some fun, bro. Mate, what would it be like to be Dominic Mysterio? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, mate, We'd for me, Ripley, to live Morgan and he's married, mate, Who's how next? good. The storyline, it's getting very interesting. I'm loving that they've gone down the direction of Liv Morgan saying, I want to take everything yeah. from Rhea Ripley and including Dominic. Yeah. I'm glad that they're really capitalizing on that. Um, I think it's gonna be, look, I've seen the memes, it's pretty good, but I yeah. think it's gonna come to a point where it's gonna be Rhea versus Liv and custody of Dominic. Yeah, I think that's gonna, what's gonna, gonna happen. But, but that's the thing, right? Like it's building up to whenever Rhea returns. Yeah. Like there's always that's that right. in the back of your mind, like what is she gonna do to mm. her? Mm. Yeah. So it's just building up a long-term story with all of this short-term stuff. Cause don't right. forget, she's already pissed that she's had to, you know, vacate the belt, yeah. Yeah. which was hers. And then now on top of the Dominic, she's gonna be fuming when she comes back. Yeah. When do you reckon she will come back? SummerSlam, usually that's always a big, big target. Uh, I don't know, how bad's the injury? <coughs> well, the injury was, it was a AC shot. joint. Yeah. 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 But I think it was a bit more serious than that. So I think she had to go for four or five months. When did she relinquish? Title. One month. I think that was a month two and a half ago. ago. No, two months ago. Was it two after, months? after Mania, actually. Yeah, that's right. It was after yeah. Mania. Yeah. So so after Mania. Okay. So she's still got two, so three, she's still got two, three yeah, months. Exactly. When's SummerSlam? SummerSlam's booked in for July. Well, July, July, yeah. July. I mean, I think uh, she, I don't think she'd come back and wrestle. I think she'd probably just come back and yeah. make the. Yeah. Yeah. And then she'll do a bit of talk while she just gets through her rehab. Sort of like what Seth Rollins did. He wasn't fighting, but he came in to build a storyline. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's looking good, that storyline. But um Ricochet now, um we've all heard the news. He's bound to leave WWE, um, especially, you know, a lot of fans, you know, judging whether he's good enough to, you know, be a title winner or, you know, really take it to the next level. I personally think he hasn't been given the chance to do that. You know, we look at Roman when he was the top dog. No one was liking his promo skills. He wasn't doing the best, but they just gave him the chance. They gave him the time and look what happened. So I think with Ricochet, not saying he's going to be Roman's level, but if you give him the chance, who knows what he can do, man? Mm. I think about time. Yeah, I love him as a wrestler. Yeah, he's yeah. phenomenal in the ring. The stuff he can do off those ropes, the high flyer that he is, is yeah. crazy. But any story he's been given, it's been average. Yeah, exactly. Like mid card, I would say. Mm. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's been mid card. It hasn't been great. He yeah. doesn't have that it factor about him. Yeah, I think it's about time he's moved on. Yeah, um, I don't think you can blame. WWE management. I don't think you can blame creative. Yeah. They gave him the uh, the Twitter title. Yeah, yeah. The, so the, title. Speech, uh, the speed, yeah, WWE speed, speed championship. So they were still trying with the guy, but he just can't reach that second level. <coughs> Who do you yeah, blame? Right. Him or WWE? I blame him. Him? Yeah. What about you, Stat? See, for me, oh, the, the, the whole speed title, I think is the concept. Oh, I like Such the concept of it, but it's a joke. Yeah. It's yeah. A I like the concept yeah. of the quick matches and all that. Yeah, yeah. I feel like they should be saved for like the main event after. Yeah. After all, of course. I don't like the fact that, like, I think 
Look, I think Ricochet is talented. One of the best high flyers I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. He's a freak. He's, he's a actually freak. a freak. Like yeah. you watch his stuff in, in like back in the indie days. Yeah. Like there's like this sixth man tag with him. Like it was him, Will Ospreay and a couple of others. Like they've had their battles and they've gone back and forth yeah, and everything. That's right. He is an amazing high flyer. Mm. He is so entertaining. But he is garbage on the mic. Now, it's I know terrible. you. to your point of yeah, Roman Reigns. He's not Reigns, the greatest. Yeah. Oh, he's not good on the mic. Yeah. To, your point, of, to yeah. your point of Roman Reigns, though, because yeah. like, I was, prior to you saying that, I was thinking, nah, he's crap on the mic. He's not but like Roman Reigns was garbage <laughs> on the mic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, um, like the whole sucker taste thing. Yeah, yeah, like, that, that, yeah, yeah. That, that always <laughs> rings a bell, right? <laughs> yeah. But you know what? I think that they would give you opportunities through the storylines that you're given. Yeah. 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 I think he had a bit with Logan Paul. Yeah, that was pretty decent. Like his matches were pretty decent. Yeah, yeah. But his promo sucked. Yeah, he does. He can't talk. Can't talk. Can't talk. Can't talk at all, man. Look, I, this might be out of the picture, but is a heel turn what he needs? I think he needs a full character change. Full yeah, character I think change. so. Whether it's heel turn or he stays a baby face, face yeah. he needs to change his character entirely. You see it happen time and time again with wrestlers. They try to stick to the same gimmick over yeah. and over and yeah. it's not working. It's like they're trying to force it onto you. Mate, Ricochet became a jobber in my eyes. Like yeah. anytime he yeah, came I out, think so too. I was ready to skip. Yeah. So he needs a t he needs a character change. Well, but, but he's yeah. won like he's won championships like That's in right. WWE, NXT, yep. North American title. Yep. Um, he's won the IC, U IC US. US as well. Yeah. But yeah. he hasn't won like the tag team titles yeah. or the no, world heavyweight. He, he was trying to gun for the world yeah. heavyweight. That didn't happen at all. But even with the US, yeah. I wasn't interested. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it, it seemed like it was boring. But that was back in 2018 or yeah. 19. Yeah. Mm. Then yeah. after that, it just faded away. He didn't win the title tag team with Braun. Strowman? No, he never oh, did. No, he only uh, Braun Strowman won it with Seth Rollins. Oh, okay. So that was only like a one-time thing. Yeah, 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 that's right. Because yeah. then they were going to fight for the main event at the top. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, he's got a um, now a rivalry with um, what's it called? Bron Breaker. Bron Breaker. That's right. Um, Bron Breaker sent him to the hospital on the Today. current Monday yep. night show. That yep. was pretty good. But again, I think it's only a matter of time before he does <coughs> leave WWE. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah. Um. Now, next one. You mentioned Alpha Academy early on. Mm. Um. How good is this storyline? Like we're talking about storylines. This has to be right now one of one of the best, if not the best. Yeah, I agree. Now. I think it's probably the most entertaining part right now. Yeah. Prior to the whole Liv getting, you know, the way she's going yeah. with yeah. the whole yeah. story with yeah. Judgment Day. Because mm. I felt like at one point Judgment Day storyline was getting a bit, bit whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's just yeah, something yeah. about it yeah. I didn't really yeah. like, yeah. right? But now that's come full circle. But the the whole <laughs> thing with the IC title. And the whole thing with um, Gable and Alpha, like Alpha Academy, yeah. yeah, it's been brilliant. But Gable has to win the title. It's Sami yeah. Zayn winning of Ganta in WrestleMania was garbage. Yeah, but they yeah. they took that garbage call and made one of the best stories in the WWE. Yeah, right? yeah. Which yeah. Gable. Exactly. And I'm glad that Gable will resign with the company. Yeah. I think that's a big deal for yeah. WWE. I think mm. it's huge. But they have to capitalize on him being a champion just for the yeah. mid card. Yeah. So where do they do it though? Um, do they do it at Clash of the Castle? Or do they, they have do it at SummerSlam. They have to look. It won't go to SummerSlam. Look, look, this brings me to the question I asked. Does Alpha Academy turn on him, making Sammy win? Or do you think the Alpha Academy does a 360 and to finally make Chad Gable proud and actually help him win? Yeah, to so twist the storyline. Samuel, that, that's Look, a, I'm yeah, not saying that's good. It's, it's to twist the storyline yeah. because he's always on him. Yeah. It's not out of the equation. I feel yeah. that's a possibility. It's not, especially after what happened on Raw today with yeah. uh, him attacking Sammy, Sammy again. Yeah. Yeah. Otis attacking Sammy. Man, it could go either way. And that's yeah. what I'm loving about WWE right now. Mm. You don't know. Yeah. I, I'm i leaning towards, a mate of mine always says, WWE is predictable. And that's yeah. the thing about wrestling. It's yeah. always predictable over the years. So I'm I'm leaning towards, oh, this is going to turn on him at Clash of the Castle. But I would love to see that. Yeah. No, like that's that's a, that's a good twist to that. I never yeah. thought of it that way. I think what will happen is, I think we're starting to see bits of the bloodline in this story. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. Starting to see a lot because, you know, Sami Zayn was the one that was pushed pillar to post, always sacrificed. Yeah. And he did mention that in the Tonight Show, yeah. actually. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Like, Sami's been there, knows what he's going through, mm, yeah. like trying to dig him out of her, but knows he's going to get bashed anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the day that Otis finally turns, look, I can't see this storyline with Sami and Chad going to SummerSlam. I really can't. Yeah. Chad's had that many opportunities. Like he had one yeah. in Montreal, lost it. Had the triple threat in well, Saudi, lost, lost it. Lost it as well. This is the third like, is the third one. Yeah. It has to end here. Yeah. yeah. Like I feel like, we, we all knew that the one in, again, like in Montreal, yeah. we all knew that Sam was going to win. He was at home. Yeah, we all knew that was going to happen, course, right? Yeah. It was going to retain. That was going to be the case. Yeah. But, and we know that Chad's been the only contender for the IC title since. In saying that, it could mean that Sammy will then win at Clash of the Castle and then Chad will just do whatever. I think Alpha Academy turn on Chad and then while in the process of trying to turn on Chad, like turn on Chad, I think um, 
What are their names? Creed Brothers. Brothers. Creed Brothers. I was going to mention Creed Brothers. Them Brothers yeah, going to yeah. come in, and they'll they'll side with they'll side with yeah, them. He spoke to them a couple few, weeks back. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, like two weeks ago, actually. Yeah, yeah. two weeks ago. So they're going to start building on that. Yeah, they'll so help him win. So either Sammy retains. Yeah. Alpha Academy turn on Chad. Chad aligns himself with the Creed yeah. Brothers, mm. or Chad wins the title. Then with being the title winner, says I never needed you, Alpha Academy. You guys are garbage. Yeah. And then brings in the Creed Brothers. I don't yeah. know. You just got me thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that was a very good one. Yeah. What if, what if uh, he wins it at Clash of the Castle? Yeah, Chad Gable. Yeah, they don't yeah. turn on him, yeah. but yeah. then it leads towards Otis v Chad. Oh, at okay, yeah, I like that. That's good. Yeah, Look, yeah, yeah. Is, that's a big chance. I think that's a tough that's one a as well. But one, yeah. what? How? How? Stat was saying about like leading to um, Clash of the Castle. Um, to be honest, I think those Creed brothers they're going to come out. Yeah, I think they will come out because. If Otis and uh, uh, Tazawa? Tazawa, yeah, if they come out as well to back up Sami Zayn, I think that's when Creed Brothers starts brawling them outside yeah. the ring. And then, and then yeah, I think Chad, I think Chad might win the title. Yeah, I think he takes. It's it. going to be a surprise. He has to. I I'm think he needs to win it because he's worked his ass off, man. Like Bro. these last couple of years, when he was with Jason Jordan, yeah. Yeah, they won the right. tag team titles. Yeah, NXT. And then he won against with Shelton Benjamin with yeah. the title as well. But then he had a he was laid off for like a couple of years with the COVID season. And then now he's rebuilding up himself. Yeah. But he's getting in the best shape right now. He's looking after himself. Yeah. And I'm like, to be honest, I actually like the way how he is right now. Yeah, bro. Love that the character. This is his best character. Best far. character I've ever seen. You know yeah. what? It I talk, miss, it thank it you. Needed, I miss thank you. Oh yeah. Because of course, we said thank you. <laughs> but I think, but like we talked about earlier, Chad needed the heel turn yeah. to really show how good he was. Yeah. Mm. Being face in WWE sucks. Yeah, it everyone does. loves the heel. It does. No one people love the face yeah. as much as they love the heel, exactly, right? Of course, yeah. but it, that's what the character change. I think exactly. the character change worked in Chad's favor to get him to this point. I hope he gets the title because oh. no, because with um, Creed Brothers, it's going to remind me of Kurt Angle and yes. Shelton and Benjamin right. and Charlie Haas. That's right. I was back yes. in 03 and 04 version. Four, four, yes. Yeah, so on that's Ray's happen. note about um, Otis and Chad Gable, I was going to say who would first Chad, who would be Chad Gable's opponent like next rivalry. If he was to win, and I think Otis would be. Has to be Otis. Has to be. I reckon that's a big, Bro. big shout. Bro, especially after what Otis <coughs> said today about how he loves him and how he, you know, he's done everything Without for him. Without him, he, I'm nothing and yeah. all that, yeah. That rivalry is going to be unbelievable. Yeah. But I, I feel like, the, uh, but then you, you say that, but I don't think it'll be for the title. No, I don't, I don't think, think so. You reckon? Yeah, no, no it won't be for a title. There, there's, Otis, there's Otis won't a lot get a title shot. There's a lot of challenges that want to go for the IC title. Um, Bronson Reed. Yeah. Bronson Reed. Because he's won the King of the Ring, yeah. So I think that gives him the opportunity to go for that IC title, and he lost against Sami Zayn and Chad Gable in that triple threat. Correct me if I'm wrong. That was at Saudi as well. Correct me if I'm wrong. Gunther won King of the Ring. Yeah, Gunther won. Yeah, Gunther. Um, Bronson Reed won the. No, he won the King of the Ring. No, no, he won the Giant Memorial one. Yeah, the Andre, the Giant, yeah, the Andre, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, no, but I think with with Bronson Reed, I also think he's another one that's a mid carder that. Could really do well yeah. in, the, in the main event scene. They haven't given him that chance yet. Exactly. Exactly. He's always losing in those title matches. Yeah, yeah. I love him, bro. He's, he's, he's a big boy. He's a big, um, massive boy, he, man. I saw on Monday Night Raw when he was um, exiting the ring and you were chanting for him. I was know, losing my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw yeah, that. I went <laughs> nuts about that, man. Yeah, but now I've got beef with him because I went to his uh, Instagram. Yeah. yeah. He shared every other fan's oh, interaction no, with him was, except oh, mine. Exactly. So now we've got beef. Quick question. Oh, wow. Are you a 10-year-old girl? Yeah, oh, I, 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 I was I was built for WWE interactions, bro. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I hate right. this guy, bro. Um, <laughs> I love pushing the buttons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need it. You need to do it. Um, look, oh, talk yeah. about great storylines. The Bloodline storyline. Now, um, the Rock and Roman will soon return. I'm saying SummerSlam probably. What are your theories about what's going to happen when these two return? Oh boy, yeah. listen. It, Everyone's saying The Rock is controlling all of this. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I definitely think Roman's coming back face. Yeah, I definitely think he's coming back yeah. face. I think he's coming back to face solo, and mm -hmm. I think there's going to be a lot of back and forth between them, him building his bloodline back. Yeah, until we get to WrestleMania. Yeah, oh, for sure. Um, yeah, I think so. Well, I think yeah. w with me, I feel The Rock's going to come back SummerSlam. I think there's a chance it could be a Rock Cody SummerSlam. Rock wins the belt, you know, and I feel this is how I put the storyline out there. Jay and Jimmy Uso would come and try and help Cody to win. You got Solo and the rest of the bloodline helping Rock to win. Rock eventually wins. Rock coming out, oh, I'm the new tribal chief. And then Roman's theme song just pops. You reckon that he, starts it. You, so you reckon it waits until WrestleMania? So I think, so it'll be as a, a Rock and Cody were at SummerSlam. And I think when the Rock wins the bell and then he's saying, I'm the new tribal chief. And then Roman Reigns, at that point he says it, Roman Reigns comes out and tries to confront him. My only issue Dang. with that is the Rock schedule. 
apparently he's still filming a, mo- a movie. Yeah, he is at the moment. Yeah, so he might right. not be. But oh, so he might yeah. not be. Back it might. It might lead to WrestleMania for sure. But um, for Reigns, I think he will return before SummerSlam to lead up that storyline with Solo. Yeah. Um, because I heard the signing now that they've got a new member into the bloodline That's as right. well. Yeah. He kicked Yeah. He's a he's huge, man. huge man, yeah. bro. Huge, huge signing. Man. You know what's awesome about this is this bloodline's doing the complete opposite of Roman's. In yeah. that Roman took years to build his out. Yeah. Yeah. So it took a long time. In two months. Yeah. I was trying to find or we have a WWE chat or WhatsApp chat. I was yeah. trying to find because there's a guy I've forgotten who's signed to WWE at the moment but hasn't been put out in storylines yet. Oh, uh, okay. J- uh, Jacob Fatu was Jacob it? Fatu, yeah. Yeah, was it? Jacob Fatu, that's the one. he's a gun Didn't they announce I was trying to find that. or something like that? No, no, no. no. So Jacob Fatu hasn't been uh, announced anything yet because they felt like the, the the reports coming through from like PW Insider and all them and yeah, yeah. Fightful Select or that, they were saying they're scared that if they bring out Fatu because Fatu's a freak. Yeah. Some he of the stuff, he's, I've seen some of his highlights, he's nuts yeah. what he can do. They said that if he brought him into the bloodline, or early, it'll overshadow Solo and what he's oh, trying yeah. to do. Exactly. Yeah. But now they've signed him, they've signed Hikuleo. Now the problem I have like I, I'm loving all this because what I believe leads to it leads to a bloodline brawl at War Games. Oh, oh yes, yes, yeah. That, that I, I mean, see like that. we, we saw that. we yeah. saw last year that was great. the yeah. the amount of times that it was Cody Judgment Day, um, the amount of times that um everyone else got involved. Mm. In, like I started to blank out there, but Cody was involved in Judgment Day a fair yeah. bit, and then everyone else they got involved in Judgment Day and they all decided to side with each other. That's right. And then McIntyre was in Judgment yeah. Day and everything else happened, but that carried on for ages. It was, yeah, yeah right? actually did. Yeah, yeah. Somerset, Somerset will probably be the best point to bring out, like, you know, your Hikileos, your Jacob Fatus. Yeah. Reigns yeah. comes back as face, like you said. Yeah. But this is how I see it. If Jay Uso gets involved in this bloodline story, yeah. his whole persona as main event has to go. Yeah, yeah it has to yeah. go. So the Usos can reunite together. That's right, because yeah. Usos will need to reunite. And I also think on that, I think Jay Uso is not hitting it. Yeah, like, I disagree. So? I disagree. Yeah, but uh, no, no. But hang on a sec. Hang on yeah, a sec. Yeah. I'm not talking about him and the crowd and that. That's, yeah, yeah. that's clear to see. That'd yeah, be stupid yeah. if I said that. Yeah. But I'm saying they're bringing him up to make this main event guy. What's he done? Yeah, he's lost yeah, nothing. Yeah. Of of the 30 odd matches he's had as the main event, he's lost 27 of them. Yeah, yeah, actually. So, so yeah. what? Yeah. So what's he done? So yeah, that's a problem. So yeah. that's and that's the problem. Like you can't say, oh, main event Jey Uso, sure, no problem. He'll be the main event, but he's not winning. He's not backing it up. Right. So what are they waiting for then? Why are they not giving him that title? Look, that I, I don't think he's ready for it. That I, don't yeah, I don't think, think he's ready. ready no, it. I don't think he's ready for it. He's actually used to the ta- uh, tag team title yeah. picture. Him and his brother. They've been there for like the so way long. The way that hit, the way that Jimmy J bounced off each other yeah. in their promos was amazing. Jay's done a couple of good promos as a singles competitor. Yeah, he's not. He doesn't. He's not the same. Like I get the crowd, the song. I get it all. I get it all. But the ability to bring him in and be like a world champion. I don't doesn't see suit it. Him. Doesn't Bro, suit it doesn't, him, suit, no, doesn't suit him. Yeah, yeah. look, I, I think he's giving too much of a joke for it to suit him. Yeah, but look, what's that was saying about like leading that um, story up yeah. with the bloodline mm-hmm. and all that. But if Jimmy and Jay, they come together, I think that's going to happen in the next couple of weeks as well. It'll have to. Yeah. Jimmy yeah. 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 Jimmy's injured at the moment. Yeah. And speaking of Jacob Fatu, I think they should he should align with Jay Uso and Jimmy Uso. Yeah. Because Roman. Hikaleo is going to join the bloodline with his brothers. Yeah, it's Tama, Tama yeah, Tonga Tama. and Tonga Loa. That's it. They've, got, they've had a lot of success so in New Japan. Yeah, that's right. So if, yeah. let's say the WWE actually go with the Bloodline War Games, it'd be them four and Jimmy, Jay, Jacob and Roman. Ja- yeah. yeah, so wow. four or four. That would be crazy. That would that, be, that would lead, that game, would be the best War Games of Ever. all time. Yeah, that yeah, would be sure. yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And we've seen some bangers in NXT. 100%. Absolute bangers. But they, be I, I believe that they're going to build the Bloodline story into yeah. a War Games main yeah. event. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the only way I see 100%. it going down because they can't just cut it for SummerSlam. They can't. They could probably leave it at War Games. Yeah. But I think something else will continue to yeah. happen. And I think, I think The Rock will come in Probably okay. Royal Rumble. It's, yeah, probably. And, yeah. Then, and then I think even that, I could even come in for War Games, pending his schedule and everything yeah. else like you mentioned. But I think that if he comes in and then he overshadows, no, I'm the real head of the table because you got Solo, you got Roman. Yeah, yeah. I'm the real head of the table and he just causes dramas for the rest of to WrestleMania. But forget that. I completely forgot about War Games, bro. Yeah, That's been yeah. the best P- yeah. PLE for the last two years. It's been crazy. 100%. Yeah. It's been great. Because we had two years ago was the Bloodline and... And uh, Sammy and... Oh, Sammy, Sammy versus... Yeah. Yeah. And then last and KO year was Judgment Day. Yeah. Judgment Day versus Cody. Cody. So, um, That's the, right, yeah. Jay, Seth, that's coming yeah. to me now. And then, then Sam Punk's return. Oh, that was crazy. Amazing. That, that was mad. On the point of Jay Uso, does he need the money in the bank to finally get that title? He has to. Yeah. I, I don't agree with him winning. I think Ludwig Kaiser would be an amazing money in the bank, amazing winner. money yeah. in the bank winner. I think he, I think he's a phenomenal talent. Yeah, going breaking away from um, Imperium. Yeah, but do you think he's ready for that yet? Right now, he's not ready for I, it. I, I can't see it. Well, I think he's, I think he's more ready than Jay. I really thought that today. I was thinking about that as I was watching Raw. He's going to be a great IC champ. Yeah, phenomenal IC champ. He right will. Now. I don't think he's ready for the main event scene. 
I think the only way you get Jay Uso to win a, a money main in the bank. title yeah, is to give bank. him the money of the bank. He has to win even if man. he's just a. That's um, no, all good. It's Sorry. good. Even if he's just a uh, transitional champion, he'll take it for a few months. Oh, yeah, this, that. Go back to yeah. being with Jimmy. He, look, he deserves a man. As, as Stat said about him going main events, win, trying to win titles, he's just losing everything. He has to yeah. win the money back. It's the only right thing to yeah. do. Have he's to, been yeah. doing so much. And it, I feel sorry for him because he's, he's like Ricochet, but more better than Ricochet because he's getting his chances, but they're just not letting him win the titles. Exactly. And Money in the Bank is the only way that he can finally win the championship. Yeah, they've made the mistake by making him lose so many times. Yeah. yeah. They needed to give him a win. They need to give him a few wins. Like you said, he needs to be like that interceding champ where he yeah. comes in, holds the title for a little bit and then lets, and then drops it. At least he was like, all right, you know what? No, he was main event, Jey Uso. Yeah. He lived yeah. up to that title because he was a champ. Yeah. Regardless exactly. of what title it is. Give him two... Anything give him, about speed, yeah. not the speed title. We'll give him two good rivalries with the title, then yeah. let him drop it. Move that's on. It. Go he's back to he's the done his role. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and especially with Jimmy coming back, that's what I'm scared about. If Jimmy comes back within these two weeks, he's not winning nothing. Yeah, he's, he's not going to win nothing no, at no, all. He won't win anything. Jimmy, no, you're right. Jimmy and Jay on their own just it won't work. When they're in WWE together, they're a group. It so just, it it's just they stuffed it up with them at WrestleMania. Yeah, they actually. That, yeah, yeah, they blew it. A phenomenal they match. That match. And they blew it. That match was everyone was saying about their backs, um, the Roman and the tag team match when they had that fight. That was their, the best part of yeah. better than their- Yeah, for sure. Well, match. apparently their time got cut and they had to- oh, okay. By a fair bit. It yeah. wasn't yeah. cut, but it was cut a lot. <laughs> and and Jay came out and said how disappointed he was that the time got cut because they- Look, I, I think the way they built up the Jimmy and Jay storyline wasn't amazing. No, it was yeah, it wasn't the greatest. It wasn't battle. great. If they had better, if more of a build up and it led to a proper match, it yeah. would yeah. be, be breathtaking. Yeah, but unfortunately with the time they had, it, yeah. just, it wasn't a great match. Look, f before we move on to, I want to talk about you guys and your YouTube journey. Um, if Jay doesn't win it, you said Ludwig Kaze is a good option. What about you? Besides Jay, who do you reckon's another candidate to win it? The only person I'd say is LA Knight, but he's yeah. going after that US, US title. title. Yeah. Yeah. Slogan Paul. But Which I think he'll win. You, he will yeah, eventually, yeah. at SummerSlam. But, but he isn't it at Cleveland? <laughs> Um, oh, yeah, Logan's home ground. Logan's just ha he's about to have a kid. He's going to drop it. Oh, okay, fair enough. Anthony, any money in the bank? Bro, spoilers, man. Bro, I, I, I really, <laughs> look, to be honest, I really <laughs> don't know who's going to be on that card for the six pack. I mean, the money bank. Uh, but who would you give it to if you knew who was going to be in it? Well, since um, Bronson Reed won the Andre Memorial Battle Royal, yeah. I reckon give it to him. Win the money in the bank. Yeah, cool. That'll be a good chance. Yeah. yeah, but I think I think they'll probably try to push for like a like another Sami Zayn. Yeah, yeah. like a Sami Zayn. They, they could push for him to have it. I don't yeah. want Sami Zayn because the thing is, if Jay has it, <coughs> he's going to cash in on exactly because he's going to ruin the whole bloodline story. And, and there's not much yeah, talent like the way, as well. Like, it's the bloodline yeah, story. Yeah. I think he ruins and it. And like yeah. we've all now we've all when Sami was win that bloodline, um, what's it called rivalry, whatever. Everyone is calling him to the throne, Roman, but he hasn't got his world title yet. Does he win the money in the bank? Who's this? Sorry. Sami Zayn, if he does lose the IC champion, does he get it? Does he get his chance to I win the title? I feel like if they give it to him, the, the fans are going to revolt. Yeah, yeah, they they revolted when they won it as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They, they'll lose their minds because yeah, yeah. he's been shoved down our throats a bit. Like For sure. it, this role right now is really good. Good, yeah. But if they do that, they're going to have a anarchy on their hands. And the WWE fans are ruthless when it gets to that. Yeah. Well, look, now it's time to talk about you guys. First of all, I want to ask, you know, what's the story behind starting a YouTube channel? Bro, what was it? Three years ago now. Actually, today's our anniversary. I just found oh out. no way! Oh, Happy really? three years. Yeah, <laughs> did not realize until uh, YouTube that's told me today. But uh, yeah, we started three years ago. Um, Stat and I have always loved a good potty. We've always, you know, had a laugh watching them. And um, one day we just got over in my garage and we're just yelling about the fact that there was nothing good to watch because every time we watched something, there was just always something with either swearing or people yeah. talking about crap. Yeah. And um, we were getting frustrated. <laughs> And we're both Christians and we, we always talk about the fact that being a Christian and complaining is a waste of time. Exactly. If you're not going to do something about mm. it. Exactly. So yeah. I just looked at him and he was running his own uh, NRL podcast at the time. And I said to him, I go, bro, you want to give it a shot? Like, let's just try it out. Might yeah. as well. Mm. And uh, Stat said, yes. Yeah, I said, yeah. And then we had some discussions around it. And, and we, like he said, we were talking about like every podcast out there, there's always like, Crap that's talked about. Like, people like, like, you listen to like some of the footy podcasts, they talk about sex. I'm like, bro, I want to yeah. listen to the footy podcast for footy. footy. Yeah, why are you exactly. You know yeah. what I mean? It kind of, content, that was my kind yeah. of motivation to start yeah. my own podcast yeah. and kind of do that, which obviously didn't last too long. But anyway, that's fine. <laughs> um, so we obviously had a discussion and we, Ray was like saying, like, you know, at the end of the day, we can sit here and talk, but we can just do it. Yeah. I'm like, you know, it's not a bad idea, right? We're in COVID, we can't do much, we don't have much of a choice. So why not we give it a shot? Um, gave it a shot, started doing it. And I made it like very clear, like I was just going to be myself throughout yeah. it, through the good, through the bad. Mm -hmm. I was exactly. Be myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
And there were times, like, even in it, where we started doing it, where I hated it. Okay. Got to a point where I hated recording. Like, the reason I think I got over it, because we had just come out of COVID, things were going back to normal. And I said to Raga, look, we'll do it. COVID will come back and podcast, see, where see, it later. Lives, yeah. Yeah. see where it leads. Yeah, see where it leads. But more, I was like, no, see you later. Like, I'm done with the podcast. <laughs> like, I've done my part. We had yeah, the yeah. laugh for the run, but we did it. And whatever. And then you start to get a bit dry, yeah. a bit of a dry spell. Like if you watch back some of the old episodes, like and we did it once, we did it once a week as well. Like okay, yeah. we, it was very easy to get over it because we didn't know what we were doing as well. We were trying show notes, we tried topics, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we just realized if it's not fun for us, it's not fun for the audience. Yeah. And if it's not going to be fun for us, we're going to stop. Yeah. I, and I and I genuinely hated the podcast. Okay. It sounds really bad now, but I'm being no, honest. No, no, he, never to, he, he never said a word to me, but so he had yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> I hated it, but I didn't have to say anything. Like yeah. you'd see me on some podcast. Yeah. He'd be like, "Oh, say what's going on." I'd be lying down like, over. Hey, yeah, yeah, but that's how I showed it, right? But then, bit by bit, we started doing it, started doing it more. And the the turning point for me, I think, was when we had a church conference, um, called Trinos Summit a few years back. Our church hosted yeah. a bunch of other churches mm -hmm. from Australia and, and, and New Zealand and America and a couple other churches. And um, we were talking, Ray Cowan was about, I need to talk to you, all right? He was about the podcast, I'm like, damn, here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he goes to me, bro the podcast has done something really good. I'm like, okay, well, what's that? Let's see. Let him ramble on. And, and he started talking and basically, because a lot of our stuff is Christian content, yeah. Yeah. Like we, we try to push out that, you know, if we're Christians, we can have fun. We can talk about different things in the yeah. world. We can have fun. By the end of the day, we need to represent Christ. Exactly. exactly. And he, he started telling me, he goes, one of the guys from another church um, in, a, in a different state altogether was watching our podcast. He was on the verge of, you know, his life going upside down and steering away from God. He listened to our podcast and he's made a decision to kind of reconnect with God and, and get his life back on track. Wow. Yeah. That's nice. That for me was yeah. like, okay, clearly this whole time thing, we're just doing a podcast, no one cares, no one watches it, all that mates trash us. It's not worth the time. That for me was the, was the turning point for me. It was like, okay, you know what? We said that in the beginning, we're going to honor God in this. God is going to be glorified in this. And here I am with this kind of really crap attitude where I was like, yeah, no, I don't care, I'm done with it. That for me was like, okay, we actually... It's just crazy it sounds to me because I'm 24-7 I'm like yeah. a lunatic. Yeah. But we make a difference. To glorify God, it's, it's not of us. We're just, yeah, we're just two blokes. We like, don't do it to, uh, for us. We yeah. have to glorify God. And God got the glory in that. Yeah. And for us, it was like, you know what? Th yeah. That is that extra motivation. That for me, I was like, you know what? Okay, let's push this. Let's make a difference. Let's really see what we can do for Christ in the platform, in the, in the opportunities that we've got. Exactly. And it's like, it's, you could say it's a sign from God. You know, that one person was watching and, you guys didn't know, but you were changing his life. You know, mm. he wanted to keep on watching. It was making him rethink mm. about his life, and that's why it's made you continue doing it. Yeah. You know? yeah, which is a good thing. You know, that's it's it's great to hear that. Mm. Um, now, what is the best part about running a YouTube channel? You spoke about the ups and downs, but now you're really hitting your prime. What's the best thing about it? Uh, the best thing about it is probably, like Stat said, seeing that it's working. Yeah, I mean, we're able to show. Again, we both Christians, we both go to church and we're both leaders in, in different areas of our church. And seeing these young guys and young girls call us up or text us and say, bro, like when we did our first vlog, yeah, one of the boys calls me up, he goes, bro, you guys were just you. Yeah. Mm. I go, yeah. He goes, like, but you just didn't put an act on, like you just didn't try to be anything else. You guys were just you. I go... Bro, that's what being a Christian is. Yeah, exactly. It's not walking into a church with a Bible under your arm and a tie on and saying, "Oh yeah, I'm a nice little Christian," yeah. and pretending to be something you're not. Yeah. No, being a Christian is living with Jesus in your life every single day. Yeah, hundred percent. And so, being able to show that to people and just being—I mean, my favorite thing is interviewing people. I love getting people's stories and being able to interview people and see what makes someone move forward with Jesus Christ in their life. That's it for me. So, what mm. about you, bro? Yeah, I agree. Uh, for me, it's more um, just being able to show that we can be Christians, but we can have fun. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be fun in clubbing and drinking and drugs and this and yeah. that and that's all all that garbage. But it's more in like we can do a vlog. We can go to Queensland, go to a mate's wedding, have a bit of a laugh, and vlog it along the way, and just yeah. just live a normal life where we can still be born again Christians, still represent Christ the best we can, and, and glorify God. I think that's the biggest thing for me. Yeah, exactly. On that point, you know, people think, you know, going clubs, getting drunk, that's the way to, you know, enjoy your life. But really it's about when you're following God truly, that's when the peace comes into your life and in you're enjoying life mm. through that way. Mm. Um, but now what are the future goals for your channel? The future goals is just to keep ticking, really. Keep I mean, going. we don't, 
like our first goal was to hit a thousand. Yeah. And we did that um, with a little help from YouTube's, you know, yeah. programs and things <laughs> like that. But we did that. But I think something Stat said to me recently, I think is really our goal is as long as it's still fun. Yeah. And as long as we still see it making a difference, we're going to keep doing it. Yeah. So our goals right now are just to get more interested by it, I guess. Mm. Find some funnier guests, find some people that can talk to us and just keep grinding. Yeah, well, you, you've you seem to have a lot of fans. What is the you know best interaction you've had with a fan? Stato, surely there's many <laughs> stories. Stato's got better stories than me. <laughs> okay, come so on. So I get all the it out there, man. I get all the serious <laughs> stuff like Ray. You know, this episode, you know, really yeah. touched my heart. This guy, he gets the fun stuff. Oh, I get on. all the fun stuff. I was out one night after church. I was catching up for dinner with a mate. We're in Liverpool. We grabbed the kebab. We're just we're chilling out and we're just chatting and. Talk about a couple of things, give me some advice and just in certain areas of my life. And we're just having a, having a bit of a yarn and a guy comes, pulls up a chest, he's down and he just eyes me out. <laughs> now, I'm not one to fight. I'm not one to like, oh, what are you looking at, bro? Yeah, yeah, come yeah, fight yeah. me. But I don't care. Like, yeah, yeah. But I was like, I saw it. I'm like, I'm going to ignore it. Anyway, happened a couple more times. But then there was one point where like I stopped talking to the guy in front of me. I yeah. looked at him and I was like, <laughs> and then I looked straight back like three, four seconds. He's just eyeing me out. I'm like, okay, well, he's going to fight me and I'm going to die. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to bash me. I'm not oh, even going to yeah. him. Anyway, so I just kept talking. I tried to ignore it, tried to ignore it. Like, cause you know, when people look at it, it's a bit weird, right? It's like, weird, yeah. yeah. Like it feels awkward at yeah, the same time. Yeah, it feels weird. Like, bro, like, and especially for that long. Like, yeah, and I'm thinking, yeah. man, I must, have, I must have done something it's wrong. It's uncomfortable. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, so we finish up and this happened for a period of like 20 minutes to half an hour. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so we walk out, we pay, we walk out and, and the guy is sitting in the corner and I walk off with my man like, no, I just gotta ask. Yeah, you gotta ask. Why does this guy keep looking at me? Like, I'm just so curious. Because if you leave and have that in the back of the yeah, head, I won't sleep. Yeah, you won't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I won't sleep, man. Because he, never, goes, he never goes to Liverpool either, so it was like, what yeah, is I going barely, on? Yeah, I can barely yeah. go to that. Yeah. That spot was the first time ever. I was yeah. catching up with a mate. I didn't really catch up with it. I could do it. Yeah. Okay, I'm so curious, man. So I turn yeah, around, yeah. I go, excuse me, bro. It's yeah. like, oh, hey, bro, how are you? I'm like, okay. Let's pull that up. Pause for the other one. Hang on a sec. I said, I go, bro, everything all right? Yeah. He goes, yeah. I go, bro, look, I go, look, I don't, I'm not here to cause any trouble. I don't want any problems. I go, bro, I just saw you eyeing me out. Yeah. For like the last 20 minutes, half an hour. Like, I don't know what's going on. Everything all right. He goes, bro, he goes, um, he goes, do you do a podcast? Oh my God, boy. Oh, my God. Here we go. I go, yeah. He goes, you do a footy one, right? I go, bro, I used to do a footy one. I go, but yeah, not yeah. anymore. He goes, you go for doggies. Yeah. Now either he's watching my podcast or he's a racist. Like, <laughs> <laughs> could be like, yeah, could be both, right? So I'm like, oh, whatever. And then I go, I go, yeah, yeah, I do, I do forty part. I go, but I do another one, my mate. Yeah, bro, I love your content. I love your passion about the dogs, whatever. And he started going, on. I love the podcast that you do this and that, whatever. I'm like, all right, bro, I appreciate it. And yeah, then yeah. turned out he was a Dragons fan, so we started talking a couple minutes. And my mate was a Dragons fan that was there, so we started chatting more. And then um, that, that was like, that was so funny, man. And then he was like, and he's like, oh, bro, if you have in the area, call me. <laughs> like, I didn't even know you. Like, you don't have his number. I didn't even know your name. I didn't even get your name. We'll go call you. Like that was like a funny experience. But like other times where we've been, um, oh. one of my other ones was like we had a church, like the, the same conference. Yeah. Were well, there? One of the guys comes to me. He's like, "Oh, you stat." I'm like, yeah, like, yeah. that's obvious. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, obviously. Well, I'm not right. At, at church, like, yeah. everyone knows us. Like, yeah, so we're not, not helping out. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, we're not like, special. We're like, we're just two blokes, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, yeah. yeah, I'm saying, because, bro, I love your content, whatever. Love this, love that, whatever. And his name was Greg. And I was like, oh, thanks, Greg. I appreciate it, whatever. Yeah. Like, it was Saturday morning, Saturday night. I see him. I go, Greg, hi, bro. He's like, I can't believe you remembered my name. <laughs> yeah. like, bro, relax, bro, 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 calm down. It's all right. Struck. Yeah, yeah. Oh and then like, God. we ended up like hanging out, grab some photos with like oh, some of the guys good, yeah. and like at the church up there. Yeah. And just things like that where like we get to have a bit of a laugh with them and, and just see that. Like that's the funnest part about it. Yeah, I think yeah. it's probably my that, favorite that's part. That's the best thing, man. We had one that was well, at the park shooting a TikTok content. It was uh, that footy one. Um, mm. the, um, I don't know if you saw it. It was like, when you're kids and oh you're playing footy with the, your your cousins and like oh I'm Bob yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah yeah he did that one and <laughs> some kid came up to us he goes oh can we, he didn't even know we ran a podcast but he just says can I have you guys sign my shirt get it out us three yeah. didn't want to sign it because first of all who I are think we? that felt so shy yeah, yeah. Like, it's not because we were shy yeah. first of all who are we second of Bill's all Bill's losing his mind in yeah. the background there. <laughs> He, every single time <laughs> Every single time He says we're shy But we keep telling him Like as I said Who are we in second of all We don't want to ruin his shirt Yeah Because it's the, Our signatures mean nothing <laughs> And this guy gets the pen And says <laughs> it I have Very to do good that. baby I have to Very do good, that. good. Well Yeah you have to bro We didn't yeah, sign it's a bit of a laugh We end up just Signing Just his Yes really Signing his arm Just signed his arm I feel bad for Yeah we end up doing that Signing his arm Hectic yeah yeah It's mad I feel bad for the kid I had to do it It's it bro How often are they going to ask you For an autograph You know what I mean 
No, I know, but he just came out of randomly and just saying like, "Can I get the signature?" Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> it is what it is, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah but man. like little things like that, and like the stories that you hear, like people like you know what I watch your podcast and you made you made this reference from the Bible and you said this and that really impacted me. Mm. That's the biggest thing, which out is of crazy, right? Like a lot of our, ep- like, bro, we're still at the beginning stages, yeah. man. Like some of our episodes still only get like sixty views, seventy yeah, yeah. views, and yeah. I, w- and we always look at each other, like, bro, is anyone actually watching this thing? Okay. But then you get that comment of, bro, what you said there really helped. I really needed that that day, or even the the smallest thing of, bro, I had the worst day. I decided to put you guys on, and I just had yeah. a good laugh. Yeah, yeah. Like, bro, like if that's the case, awesome. Man, if that means 60 people are sitting down listening to what two idiots have to say, mm. love and love. Yeah. It's like the Bible verse when if there's one Christian in there, the it was a Sodom and Gomorrah story. If there's one Christian in there, the whole city will be saved. In a yeah. way, it's like that. Mm. You're, there's one yeah. person watching your videos, commenting, mm. you want to keep on doing it, you know? Yeah, like one of our mates who... <laughs> we love him, right? He he's like we've grown up with, kind of grown up with him, and um, he's our biggest fan. Biggest Sean, fan. Sean. Shout out to yeah, Sean. Shout out to Sean. Yeah. One of our biggest fans. <laughs> so we always put up today, right? Put up on our on our have a chat. You know the fact that we three years yeah. today, and you know thanks for joining you, whatever. And he wrote a comment like this, and like it's so funny to us. I was like, man, he's just Sean, or whatever. Yeah, but yeah. like this is like for someone to make it, he's like this brings so much joy to my heart. All the work, effort, and love going into this project to chat through life in lockdown is nothing short of an encouragement to me. That's yeah. and you just read that. That's even though it's one it. of our mates, but we know that he is like he waited Monday morning seven a.m. for every episode. Yeah, it's worth it. Do you know what I mean? Like stuff like that. And you're like, man, like that's really cool. Even yeah. though it's one of our mates. Like it's so and, good to yeah. see that, that motivates you guys to keep on going. Yeah, you know, just for those people. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, before yeah. Uh, the last question as well. So, do you see yourselves doing it this long uh, for long term, or as long as it's fun? Yeah. And as long as it keeps impacting people, mm. I don't see us stopping anytime soon. That's good, man. That's it, man. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for hopping on our podcast. We, really, thank you, we really appreciate it. I Wonderful it. chat. Uh, make sure, guys, you go link in the description to their YouTube channel. Hit a like, um, subscribe to their channel, and also hit a like, comment down below to this video. And yeah, thanks, boys, and we'll see you guys soon. See you.